Good evening and welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Um, ask the audience to turn off cell phones like I just did mine. And uh, we'll call the roll first, then I have a few things that I need to mention. All right. President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Baker is absent. Secretary Kaminsky is absent. Treasurer Branstadt, I am here. Member Gorton. Here. Member McFarland. Here. And Member Vanderkellen. Thank you. We have a, a quorum. Uh, I'd like to announce to the public at this point a couple of things tonight. The big part of the agenda is on the uh, search firm presentations to us for our superintendent search. Um, the two board members who are not here tonight, uh, one well scheduled ahead of time, and uh, Lynn, who's sick tonight, will be watching this by video. So they'll get a first hand view, just like we will, of these folks. So when we go into the decision-making meeting next week, every board member will have had an opportunity to hear what these have to present, okay? So I just wanna make that clear. Secondly, I need to entertain a motion now so I don't disrupt presenters on extending the meeting. Our bylaws say we have to be adjourned by 9.30 and rather than wait till 9.30 to do it, I know we're going past that. Uh, I'd like to extend till 10.30 tonight. That'll get us through all the search firms. And we also have to go into closed session at the end uh, for purposes of negotiations. So, might as well get that out of the way now. Give you an enthusiastic mm -hmm. motion to extend. <laughs> I second it. Okay, <laughs> motion by Scott, second by Angela. Uh, any discussion on that? Seeing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? There are no nays, so we are extended to 1030. Uh, that said, we'll move into the um, regular consent agenda tonight. Uh, in the consent agenda are the regular meeting minutes from February 11th and the special meeting minutes from uh, Wednesday, last Wednesday. Uh, a summary of wage rates, and uh, when we come around to it, Gary, I'll have you comment on that. Uh, approval of the payment of the school's bills in January. Those are listed in your agenda. Um, so at this point, I would entertain a motion for approval of the consent agenda. Move that we approve the consent agenda. Moved by Yvonne and supported by Scott. By Scott. Uh, at this point, I'll open up for any questions or concerns on the consent agenda. We have some questions. Should we extend the Outlook Express hardware in the fall? Should we do some of the payments that we're making? In which part of this? Point to me agenda specifically. Five. For the purchase orders, I yes. uh, can't answer that question, Mrs. Klein. No. For outlook exchange, I think. I, I don't know. I don't have a listing of the purchase orders right in front of me. I wouldn't think it would be because that was approved a couple board meetings back, and I'm assuming the purchase orders, because they were approved by the board, were issued, and we're well on our way to purchase them. Right, that. but they would go on to the listing of any purchase orders that were issued during that time period. Right. That's a perfect example of a question. If you can give us a heads up before the board meeting, mm -hmm. there's just no way to answer that off the top of our heads at a meeting like this. Well, and I just found out today that um, we can save over $400,000 I think we clarified earlier that this is just a server upgrade. I don't think it's related to using Microsoft Exchange um, or the kind of email system you want to clarify. It uh, simply stores uh, the email data in the servers that are five to seven years old. They've been running 24 seven over that uh, period of time. So it's actually just the hardware that's where the emails are stored. It's ir my understanding is it's irrespective of the type of system we right. would use. Right. And I know we've covered this at a previous board meeting and before. So but emails in the cloud, so you don't need that hardware. So. Well, Ms. Vanderkam, would you like to make a motion that uh, strike 2.3 until you are clarified? Uh, before we do, I'm not sure where that is because 2.3, as Ms. Young handed it to me, has Yider Insurance Group, Thermito, Thermico, Stapleton's Make-A-Wish Foundation, City of Midland, and Capital City Trucks. So it's not included. 
And on purchase cards, I have City of Midland, HP Direct, Republic, Rydell, World Stride, and Zentex Media going to a club account at Dow High. Okay, so list of purchase orders does not include that. No. no. Okay, so. Could you find out okay. if you've already ordered that hardware to see if we would be able to cancel that and table this discussion so we could get some more information and have two weeks to study it further? Do you, do you want to make a motion to not approve 2.3? No, I want to approve 2.3, but I would like to table the discussion regarding the hardware. It's, yeah, I guess I'm not understanding. We're not having a discussion about hardware now. Right. Anyway, the outlook, so, well, I am because I did the well, research today. Let's bring that up. Let's bring that up at the appropriate time in the agenda, please. Okay. Which is at the end on the uh, study discussion session. That would be great. Okay. Okay. That that said, um, any other questions or concerns? And if not, I will turn it over to Gary to comment on the summer wages. Yes, just for explanation, um, we have a. Uh, uh, section in our contract with the MCEA that sets what the rates are during the summer for the teachers to be paid if they are doing uh, summer study, uh, sometimes uh, work with kids in uh, camps that we might have during the summer, those types of things. This is not at the same hourly rate uh, that teachers would get on their regular co contract throughout the year. We had a lower rate and every year we have to adjust that rate because of the way the formula is set up is that those rates uh, can go uh, up by the consumer price index uh, from uh, as it uh, we spell it out from January 2012 to December 2012 um, and, and we have run these calculations this formula through the MCA they are in agreement with those figures that uh, Linda has run and so this is approval of uh, an LOA between the district and the association to make those changes to those wage rates um, as spelled out in the formula of the entire contract. Any questions on that? Seeing none, I'll move into a vote on the motion. All, uh, all in favor of approval of, uh, I'll call it just 2.3 inclusive, say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed, say nay. There are no nays. Uh, it, uh, consent agenda is approved. We'll now move into request to address the board. Audience is a little sparse tonight. Anybody request to address the board? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll move into curriculum instruction, and we have a study committee study report. And uh, Ms. Baker being sick, and the chairman is deferring to Ms. Gordon. Okay. This time we met at Chestnut Hill Ele Elementary School. The committee visited the fifth grade classrooms of Rhonda Lazier, Kim Reinhardt, Beth Quimby, and Cassie Evers. Students in these classrooms demonstrated how they are using iPads in their learning adventure. They sh showed off books they had created and distributed about American Indian culture, movies they had made about bacteria, and digital drawings they had created about the human heart, and they were great. They explained and demonstrated how they were able to digitally take notes through text, sound, and pictures, and organize these materials in an app called Notability. Students from a moderately cognitively impaired classroom showed how they were able to use the device to overcome physical and cognitive challenges to learning. The committee debriefed after the visitations and discussed <laughs> successes and challenges discovered through the iPad initiative. Dr. Ellison reviewed the process for staff and curriculum development proposals. These proposals are composed based on the needs presented in school improvement plans and necessary for implementation of board approved major change proposals. Staff and curriculum development proposals are submitted for committee review. Input is gathered and prioritized. Proposals are brought to the board for consideration and based on available budget implemented in the following year. For 2013-14, <coughs> 18 proposals were submitted. The committee discussed how the proposals related to the current initiatives and our goal of reducing the achievement gap and attaining 100% college and career ready students. The next committee meeting will be March 18th. Any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, we'll move into finance, and I'll turn it over to Mrs. Klein. We have some gifts for information this evening. They total $7,035.10. Uh, two corporate gifts, one from the Clorox company and one from Target, both providing support for 
field trips or student participation in other activities. The H.H. Dow High School Athletic Booster Club is providing support to both the baseball and the softball teams. Uh, we have two funds at the Midland Area Community Foundation providing support, one through the Youth Action Council, or NICYAC as it's known, to Jefferson for participation in Science Olympiad, and then the other through the Violence Prevention Partnership Project that supported Week of Nonviolence Activities at Northeast e and East Lawn. Uh, we also have a gift from Northeast Middle School Booster Club and the Woodcrest Elementary PTO. So as always, we are grateful to our donors and appreciate what they do for our students. Any questions? I'd like to thank the donors again as we repeat. Uh, the generosity is wonderful. Okay, we'll move then on to human resources, and we have a study committee report uh, to be given by Member McFarland. Okay, uh, the Human Resources Study Committee met on Thursday, February 16th, 2012 at 4 p.m. Uh, regarding the, uh, is it MACESPA? Yes. yes. Is that how you pronounce that acronym? Okay. Perfect. All right, <laughs> regarding the MACESPA negotiations, the district continues negotiations with the Midland City Educational Support Personnel Association. The contract expired September 30th, 2012. The district and the MACESPA will meet on February 18th, 2013. Regarding MFP negotiations, the district will begin negotiations with the Midland Federation of Paraprofessionals in March. Their contract expires on June 30th of 2013. Uh, regarding the MCEA contract review, Mr. Berlindi gave the committee an update of the items that the contract review teams are working on. And finally, regarding the internal staffing report for 2012-2013, the 2012-13 internal full-time equivalent staffing report was reviewed. This document reflects the staffing levels for the current school year and the previous four school years. Uh, finally, our next meeting date is Thursday, April 11th, 2013 at 4 p.m. Thank you. Any questions or comments? See none, I'll turn it over to Mr. Lindy on announce. Oh, you're going to announce these retirements? Sure. Uh, the, this is for information. We have four uh, retirements that have been announced. Florence Blahanka, teacher at Woodcrest Elementary, and that would be effective June 13th. Uh, Joan Brennan, paraprofessional at Plymouth Elementary, that would be effective June 12th. Carl R. Ellinger, that's effective July 1st. And Ione Hamer, paraprofessional at Seabird Elementary, and that would be effective June 12th. Thank you. Um, there's a listing of correspondence to and from the board, including a FOIA request by the Saginaw News. Um, at this point in time, the agenda is to move into presentations to the board. Um, I'll remind everyone that this is now where we are being presented to the board, different executive search firms tonight who specialize in school superintendent and administrator um, searches. Um, to level set for the board and the public, what you're going to hear tonight is how each of these uh, firms approach their searches, including uh, the extensive interviews and sessions out in the public to gather public input on what the next superintendent should look like, and then uh, gathering candidates for us to, to consider. I won't go into any more detail on that. They're each going to have their own um, approach to that, that that we should listen to. And the process is that after we listen to this tonight, um, I will go through some of the more recent uh, searches they've conducted and dole those out to each of the board members to do a reference check upon over the next week in front of the next special meeting uh, to, to where we're going to do the selection of the search firm. So we listen to them, do reference checks, come back to the next special meeting to do the selection. Once we've done the selection, we sign an agreement with that firm, and then they go off and do their thing in terms of what you're going to hear tonight. Okay? So. Our first victim <laughs> is, is Dr. Richard Dunham from uh, MASB.
and Teresa and Richard, we have two board members absent tonight. One is sick and watching, and the other will catch this on tape uh, immediately after the meetings. Okay. What you are going to get with MASB is the quality educational leadership services that we provide. When you hire MASB, you get our entire organization. You will get our policy. You will get our leadership department. You will get our uh, legal department. All of those people we use in our search process. An example of how we use our legal and policy department is within the area of the Open Meetings Act. We take a very, very conservative view of the Open Meeting, Meetings Act, and we will make sure that we can guide boards through that process of the superintendent search. There's very, very strict guidelines when conducting a search, what a board can and cannot do during that process. And I'll be quite honest, there are search firms that will take you right to the edge of that. And we will make sure, we will make sure that you are never in a position of compromise when we go through this process. Everything that we do is transparent. Everything that we do is open and in public. Again, we're a multi-service organization and our brand represents value and quality. You're our, our, you are our priority. We do not work for superintendents. We work for you. And I think that's a very, very key issue on what we do for you. You are our client, not the superintendent. And I tell boards, the time the superintendents start paying me an agent fee of 10 to 20%, I'll start working for them. We work for you, not the superintendent. That makes sure that we bring you the best people for you, the best fit for the Midland Public Schools, not just trying to find the next superintendent their next job. We have the resources and experience. We have 17 consultants that work for us, everywhere from the UP all the way down to the, the southern borders of Michigan. These are not only retired superintendents, but we have people from the private sector that also work for us. If that is a choice you, that you want to go non-traditional, we have the ability to recruit from that area. And value. What separates us? Again, in-house legal, we're nonprofit. You're going to get continuing edu education credit. We have expertise in board governance, school leadership, and our exclusive one-of-a-kind super pro match that I will talk about in, in just a few minutes. At this point, what I'd like to do is turn it over to who will be the lead consultant in our search, you know, Teresa Bingman. Thank you, Dick. Good evening again, everyone. Thank you so much for this opportunity to present to you this evening. Just a little bit about myself. I'm an attorney. I practiced law for a little over 20 years, and I'm still licensed to practice law. However, I'm currently serving as a consultant. Um, I own a community and economic development consulting firm in Okemos, Michigan, and I also work with MASB conducting superintendent searches and also teaching CBA classes and conducting strategic planning exercises for various districts. It's indeed an honor to have an opportunity to work with your board. I want to talk with you a little bit about uh, the process involved with the search, beginning with the preparation. Weeks one through three would be considered the preparation time. 
During that time, we establish a timeline with the board. We believe it's very important for all board members to be involved in the process. Therefore, we ensure that the timeline will match each and every one of your calendars. Um, we also solicit staff and community input. Dick is handing out a couple of binders from a few other searches that we've conducted, um, Battle Creek, um, and also Grand Rapids. We did not do the complete search in Grand Rapids, but we did the input in coordination uh, with the Regional Education Service in Kent County. However, our community input process is very thorough. We really take pride in ensuring that we reach your community, your staff, and we also have a conversation with you as leaders of this district. And we compile that information, prioritize it, and bring the raw data back to you, such as what you're seeing in those binders. And also we give you a summary of the information that has been shared by your community. We believe that community input is very important because you certainly want to know how individuals within the community feel about the type of person who will lead your district. Certainly the decision is all yours, and we certainly make that very clear during input sessions, but it has been proven to be very helpful to receive some input uh, as you go through the selection process. Also, uh, we develop the selection criteria with you, and we develop interview questions and evaluation instruments. The interview questions um, are very specific to the needs of the district and the candidate in terms of what the background, the experiences that the board is looking for in a candidate. So uh, what we typically do is that in compiling all of the input, in working closely with you, in listening to your views in terms of the type of candidate you're looking for, uh, and also knowing as much as we can about what's going on in your district and what some of your key issues are that you would want a superintendent to deal with, we develop a set of questions. We also ask you to submit questions. And then the board will then determine which of those questions you will ask the candidates. The questions are very consistent. During the first round, all of the candidates are asked the same question. Uh, the same set of questions, and during the second round, there's a little more flexibility because you're really starting to screen the candidate to the point to where you may have some more probing questions and follow-up questions from the general set of questions that would be asked. During the recruitment phase, um, oh, back to the input. One other thing we do during the input, and in, in addition to doing the in-person input, we do have an option of obtaining electronic input. That has proven to be very useful to districts. A lot of people uh, would prefer to go online and provide comments. Sometimes individuals think that perhaps people are not as candid when they follow that process, but we have found that most people who do go online and provide input will give you some really um, interesting comments, helpful comments, and I think that you would be in a position to be able to sort out those comments that are not relevant to your process. Um, we um, will post the vacancy notices through state and national channels. We'll, we will advertise a vacancy in education publications. And uh, we will provide exposure via the, in via the internet. And uh, we will recruit and solicit applications for the position. And that's done certainly through the posting of the vacancies. And also, uh, Dick had mentioned this Super Pro Match uh, tool that is available for you. So I'll turn it back over to Dick at this time and he'll tell you about the Super Pro Match. Let me see if I can uh, work the technology. Of, 
a program that was actually in, uh, in development for the last three years. What this program does, after we solicit input from the board and the community, we're going to develop a profile of what the board is looking for in their next superintendent. We have been collecting databases or database profiles of superintendents for the last three years of those people that would like to be superintendents. Uh, right now we have almost 700 potential candidates within our, our database right now. I'll give you a little bit of idea what this will look like. just the developmental site. What you will see is the ability to uh, look at the candidates that we have compared to districts uh, that would be looking for a superintendent. example we could pick a <clears throat> district that is would be looking for a superintendent and we would look at a percentage match that would be required for the board on what they were looking for in a superintendent that could be anywhere from 20 to an 80 percent match and what we're matching is their profile against the profile that the board and the community has developed in this particular case we can do either a national search which means we're going to check our database nationally I'd also like to say we have three other states that are also uh, subscribing to this service. Right now the states of North Carolina, Ohio, and Wisconsin are also using this. Uh, so whatever candidate pool they develop also goes into our central database. So in essence, you're going to be recruiting candidates uh, not only from Michigan, but if you want to do a, a national search right now, North Carolina, Ohio, and Wisconsin. But we do have other candidates from across the United States. Uh, like I said, it's, it's numbering close to 700. So we have the ability to do a national search, or we can designate the states in which you would like to recruit from. If you want to recruit from Ohio, which is a neighboring district, or Wisconsin, we do have some people from Indiana that are in our database. We could pinpoint just those states only to do our recruiting from. And again, we could do it from a national. So if we, um, again, on a... This is a developmental site, so none of these people in here are real. So they're all made up names to protect the confidentiality of whoever was in here. But we would start to recruit individuals based on whether they are a match. Where you see is you have a percentage match of what the board had determined would be a sufficient match. So if we took Janice Salk, she's looking for a national search. She's a 92% match with this district. So this would print a report for you. Hopefully. in which you would find out the education of this person, their professional experience, the district size in which they'd like to work, their preferred salary, and the demographic region in which they'd like to work. It would also let you know whether they're looking nationally, the state, or even the state region. What's so important about this? Former superintendent, I can tell you that superintendents can invent themselves to be whoever they would like to be if they would like to get a job. What this has done has indicated, in this particular instance, where this person would like to work. If this person is looking for a rural district at this size and at this level of compensation, all right, chances are, are they going to be a good fit for Midland? This may be a little stretch for them. If they're going to apply, 
and if their resume and everything else looks good, you may want to interview them, but this is probably somebody that I wouldn't recruit for this position because it wouldn't be a good fit. If you look down at this lower level, going to do is show you a match of how they matched this particular district in these categories in the area of expertise, leadership style, special skills, and characteristics. When interviewing superintendents, They determined that these are some of the areas that boards of education were really looking at as far as a match. So in this particular case, this candidate was 100% match in the areas of expertise. They were looking for somebody with budget development, curriculum development, personnel management, and so on. This person had a final matching score of 92%. So from a fit standpoint, what the board was looking for, this person's a pretty good match. Okay, this person would be a pretty good match. going to bore you too much with this but the idea is we can drill down as far as you would like with this we could look national we could just recruit from the state of Michigan we could even drill down to find people that would like to work in Michigan and in the central part of Michigan because they've identified themselves that narrowly in this program the reason is and it's based on research McCrell study was done several years ago and said that a quality superintendent needs to be in a district at least five years to have significant impact on student achievement. The average length of time for a superintendent in the state of Michigan four years ago was four years. The average tenure of a superintendent now, with all of the retirements and the retirement incentives two years ago, is less than two years. So if we're looking at putting quality superintendents into a district, it's critical that we find the right fit. We believe that this tool can help in that process. It allows us to recruit nationally. It allows boards of education, because you'll get a report on every candidate that applies for this job. We'll get to use a report that can at least identify what fit is. Because as a former superintendent that applied for jobs, the worst thing I ever wanted to hear from a consultant is you just weren't the right fit. And when I would ask the question, what does that mean, I never got an answer. This at least helps to quantify and qualify what fit at least looks like, at least at a smaller scale. So we think it's a real benefit to that process. Okay, with that, I want to turn it back over to Teresa. So in looking at that super pro match, um, that's a lot of information, but it's very valuable information because all of those categories that you saw listed up here are the categories that you will provide input um, for at the beginning of the process. That would include, um, you would let us know the level of education that you would like to see in the next superintendent, the experience, the areas of expertise, the professional leadership style, specialized skills and personal characteristics and all of the information that you provide is then matched with whatever um, exists currently within the system uh, back to the process the the board leadership uh, weeks 11 through 13 that is the time frame in which we would um, go through the review of resumes and application packets uh, in terms of what you would be looking for uh, within those packets once you receive them. We will talk about effective group interviews. We will um, develop a process for telephone reference checks so that you could do some preliminary vetting before you interview the first round of candidates. Uh, and we will also uh, talk about whether the district would like a district visitation 
to the um, district where the top one or two candidates currently are employed. Uh, we have found the district visits to be very effective in that um, some boards have even asked the community and staff to join those visits uh, and parents. And it's been very effective in terms of people talking um, with individuals, gathering that information and bringing it back to the board so the board will have more information to process before they make the big decision. Um, and then also we'll talk about team decision making. I'd just like to say um, when the uh, list of candidates are vetted by the board publicly, and that is done publicly, the candidates are not vetted by name. They are reviewed by number in order to preserve that confidentiality. And we really try hard not to use gender reference either. We simply talk about in public all of those areas um, that you're looking for in terms of the educational background, experience, and, and things of that nature. Uh, certainly you have all the information in front of you to make that decision. And once you narrow the candidates to the first round of candidates, let's say five or six candidates, those individuals uh, will then have their names revealed publicly if they consent to an interview. And after that, for the second phase, most boards would narrow the number of candidates to three or four before you make your final decision. Post-placement support is provided by MASB in terms of um, the continuous interaction, follow-up correspondence as needed. Um, we can assist, as um, Dick had stated, the legal department can assist with the, con the contract and salary information and legal guidelines, and also the experienced staff at MASB would continue to assist with the transition. So I want to stop there in order to leave some time for questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the advanced material you sent us. Um, open up to questions. <clears throat> uh, I guess I'll start with the first question. What is the length or the duration of time that you provide post-placement support? Post-placement support usually for, is it a year? Two, two years. Two we years. guarantee our services for two years. Great. And would you explain by guarantee what that means, Dick? If that was my next question. If the superintendent leaves for any reason inside that two-year period of time, other than death or illness, we'll come back and redo the search for no charge except for expenses of the consultant. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any more? Did you go through how many searches total you guys have done in the, like, say, the last year? The last year? Yeah, how many? Um, to understand, across the state this last year has pr been pretty low. Oh, okay. Uh, the year prior when we had the the high number of superintendents uh, retiring from the districts. Mm -hmm. uh, we did uh, 30 searches that particular year. Okay. I did seven. I think Teresa did two that year. But uh, understand, I, saw, I oversaw all those searches as the director. I did seven personally on my own. Could I, you, oh, I'm sorry. Please, go ahead. Uh, could you um, educate us on what our potential non-traditional choices might be? Uh, sometimes non-traditional come out of the corporate uh, world that may have been uh, high mid-management uh, positions. Some are uh, could be CEOs that are looking maybe to change. We have seen non-traditional come out of the military field with high levels of leadership skills. And what's your connection to the non-traditional route? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just based on um, the way the vacancy is announced. Uh, as to whether we would be able to attract some of the non-traditional individuals. Also, if the board is especially interested in having some non-traditional candidates in the pool, we'll make an extra effort to connect uh, with resources that would provide candidates that would be suitable. We have two other consultants uh, from the private sector that are also consultants for us. Thank you. Can I just interrupt? Um, we have a lot of feedback problems back with our recording of tonight's board meeting, so we're just double checking that folks have their cell phones off. Typically, that's what causes the feedback. I guess may not because they weren't here when we announced. <laughs> yes, mine is off. <laughs> it's got to be powered off because the RF. My final question, um, and I think you can address it, is: uh, Are you anticipating a large number of searches that will be going on contemporaneously? Uh, with our search if we do select MASB? 
Um, Dick can speak to the number of searches, but this would be my only search. I okay. would dedicate my. Because it kind of sounds like the searches ebb and flow a little bit with time. Yes, they do. Um, I direct the department. I try and limit the number of searches that I do. I'm just. I just wrapped up a search last week. I'm in the middle of one search right now. We're going to be screening candidates tomorrow night. Uh, but I don't want to have our consultants doing more than one search at a time so they can concentrate on the particular district in which they're working. Great. Now, there was an anomaly several years ago and we had the vast number of superintendents retiring where we had to double up sometimes on searches where we had consultants based on the region and where they lived because if we want to try and regionalize that. That helps uh, reduce the cost to the boards so you're not bringing in consultants from you know, two or 300 miles away or 150 okay. miles. Uh, Teresa lives in Okemos, so she's got a pretty close uh, drive, relatively close. So we try and regionalize our consultants as best we can. Right, and when I conduct searches, I give it my all. Very accessible. I'm always on the cell phone. Dick knows I rode up with him. I was texting then, but always on the cell phone, the computer uh, would be very accessible and would work very hard for you to make sure that everything is done to your satisfaction because I know that this is a very important decision that you would need to make. Any more? I have a series of them. Um, okay. I'm the only board member here that's gone through one of these mm -hmm. before. So, oh. okay. Um, first of all, and I know you won't have good data per se tonight, but I'm looking for impressionistic or rough guesstimates. Um, of your recent placements, and I mean, uh, uh, Teresa, I'll address here specifically the five you've listed. How many of those were candidates that you went out and identified and pulled who ne necessarily were looking versus how many were posting and looking when they saw a posting? From the ones that are on that list, um, I did not personally recruit any of them. Um, would I would say, you. right. Okay, I so, I'm recruiter. sorry. <laughs> I would be the recruiter for this. The cons consultants in the field, I monitor that, that recruiting aspect out of my office. Um, I would say uh, Battle Creek, uh, we had 20, 26 applicants. I would say probably 50 to 60% of those were recruited through this process, through our, through our match process. Um, no, that, that's different. They were in your database. Did you go out and recruit them to be interested, or were they already just existing in the database? They were existing in the database uh, that, that we use that as our recruiting tool. Okay. Um, from those placements also, a rough feel for, I'll call it the geographic diversity. Were they all Michigan people? Uh, were some from outside the state that were the strong final candidates, the, the two or three or four that you paraded to boards? We did have some strong final candidates uh, from out of state. Um, we have placed out of state candidates, um, but there are some political problems with out of state candidates in Michigan. Uh, this is a very unique animal in Michigan right now. And the success of the superintendent uh, many times is not as strong when you bring out-of-state candidates in. That has to be a pretty special person to be able to navigate through the political process right now in this state. Not to say that they can't do it, mm -hmm. but we do have we do have the ability to recruit out-of-state, and we have. Uh, we put the superintendent from Pen or from in Pontiac, uh, from Pennsylvania. So we we have the ability to recruit. The other part with that is, is because we're part of the National Affiliation of Superintendent Searchers. We're, we're affiliated with 38 other state associations. And that's another recruiting tool that we use. If we have uh, an out-of-state candidate, I can call my counterpart in that state to do some other background checks on that person. Usually when people are leaving a job from one state to another, usually there's a reason why they're leaving. Uh, because they can't get a job in their state, they pretty much burned all the bridges. Or they're coming here usually later in their career looking to maybe have another retirement uh, opportunity in which they can they can secure a second, second retirement. That's what we find most often. Uh, because in the, in the border areas around Michigan, our superintendents, irregardless of what you read in the free press, our superintendents, for the most part, are not compensated at the same level as they are in Ohio, Illinois, and Wisconsin, and Indiana. So we have superintendents leaving our state to take superintendents there 
we don't have a whole lot coming to our state to find jobs. Okay. Um, out of your last couple of years searches, not just Teresa's, everybody's, of your firms, how many boards basically sent you back to the drawing board because you didn't bring candidates that, that they were willing to interview or felt good after interviews and said, let's go find some others? Yep. That has happened. Not on any of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm I have not personally think. recruited, I make sure I, that when think. they're screened that you have the best <laughs> candidates yeah. in front of you. Not to say that I wouldn't go back to the drawing board because right. I really would. Uh, I, I can't say that we've had to go back, but I'll take your question one step farther mm -hmm. and maybe the next follow-up to this. Have we had superintendents that have not made it through the guaranteed pe per, uh, period of time? Yes, it has. Uh, and um, and I'll be blunt, the very first one that didn't work out was the very first search that I did when I got hired with MASB. Um, and that lasted for a year. We went back and redid that search. The second one uh, was actually a search that, um, again, lasted about a year and a half with a candidate. It was an out-of-state candidate. Um, there was advice given on my behalf to be very careful with out-of-state candidates and they um, didn't follow my advice and hired that person anyway. Um, so we've had two that we haven't guaranteed, and there's one other through this process that changed jobs after three years uh, and elevated themselves to another position. So we've conducted well over 60 searches in the four years that I've been with MASB, and we've had three people that are not in the positions that they were when they hired in four years ago. Okay. And um, I will disclose, uh, Mr. President, that <clears throat> one is on my list whenever you check the references. I did the second um, screening uh, for the candidate who was now in place in the Waverly School District uh, when that reference is checked. And that was one that we had guaranteed, and we went back in and did an additional search. Okay. Um, what capabilities do you have to do salary and benefit surveys? We go through our ERIN network. Uh, which we have uh, input from a good percentage of all of the um, uh, districts throughout the state. And we can break that down regionally. We can break that down by size um, and give regional or uh, size comparisons as far as salary, along with benefits and the intricacies of that contract. Um, plus, we, we can also go into all the transparency reports that are on the websites anyway and, and find out about anything we need there too. So I scour those all the time too. I find they're, they're many times just as beneficial as our air network. Sometimes I can even find more on there. Plus I do believe the Mackinac Center just made that job a lot easier in the last uh, five days. Yeah, they have. <laughs> they have. <laughs> and you, you've, um, you've answered the question I had on the simultaneous search. It'll be a, will be a unique search for you, for Teresa yes. at that point in time. That's my questions. One final comment concerning our, and, and Teresa talked about our level of community input. Uh, we, we value that. Uh, even though I'm conducting another search at this time, for a district this size, you're gonna need multiple resources on the ground doing this. So Teresa and I will be doing the community input together. So okay. I'll be assisting in that. So it's just not gonna be a one person operation at that time. So we'll make sure that we don't disenfranchise anybody. I'm not real um, up to date on the, um, the cultural demographics in Midland, but if you notice what we did in both uh, Battle Creek uh, and in Grand Rapids, we made sure that we had uh, uh, Spanish American or Latino uh, translators. Uh, we took our online survey and also our actual hard documents and had them uh, translated into Spanish we make sure that we don't disenfranchise anybody within the, uh, within the district. We offer face-to-face -face meetings in the morning. In the evening, we wanna make sure that anybody that works first, second, or third shift is not gonna have a reason that, well, I was working at night and I couldn't make it to the, to the community input sessions. We don't disenfranchise personally, and we get tremendous input and feedback through the online survey. Okay. So you will get our best effort here. And 
we saw, in including your packet, the I think it's five of your latest, or I presume latest because they're not dated. Uh, could you do something after the meeting? You don't have to do it now. Uh, give dates on what those were. Yes. And if there's other recent searches you've done um, that we can do reference checks on, not necessarily Teresa, but the firm. Okay. Uh, if you could supply those to me also. How many would you like? I mean, you know. um, I got the five by Teresa, another five, and if you could, sure. you kind of know the demographic uh, situation, Midland in terms of demographics and scholastic achievement, all that kind of stuff. If you could send those districts that might you might presume look most like us that okay. you've done. We will make every effort to find okay. searches with the same demographics. Okay. Okay, any others? And, and the sooner the better, because I'm going to divvy up that task to the board members over the next couple of days. We can do that. We can pull it together tomorrow. We will be coming to a decision. Uh, when is our special meeting? Tuesday. Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Okay. Or Wednesday. Okay. We'll have it yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember which day it is exactly. March 5th. March 5th. We can pull that together, and we can get it to you tomorrow at Wednesday at the latest. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming all the way up. Thank you. You're very welcome. Appreciate it. Um, we're going to switch the agenda just slightly. Uh, since we are slightly ahead, um, we're going to jump to Dr. Timothy Edwards of MLI. He's here. Thank you, Thank you very much. Because um, he's here. And then uh, after he is done, we will do a, a brief break before the next presenters. That'll be our break time. Thank you. This it's, is a, this is a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Midland. Okay. Um, I don't see the clock. So uh, 20 minutes, half hour? Yep. Uh, I'll do it easy. Um, first of all, thank you. I appreciate, um, I appreciate two things. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you, and I appreciate being moved up in the order. So um, that's great. I was earlier at um, uh, Genesee school district where we finished up a search um, and I gave myself some extra time there because you never know when the final vote is taken and it took about five minutes and I was out the road so I, I'm here early so that's great. Um, my name is Tim Edwards. I'm, I'm with the Michigan Leadership Institute and I thought what I would do is um, kind of tell you how we differ from other, other search firms. Um, and then I'll go over our, our um, um, schedule and, and, and answer any questions that you might have. Um, first of all, Michigan Leadership has been in business for 14 years and have done well over 200 searches. The biggest difference in my mind between us and other search firms is how we're, how we're organized, the way the system is set up. Um, we have divided the state into seven regions. So there are seven individuals like myself around the state. And we are um, hired for that region because of our backgrounds. I was 38 years in education. I spent most of my years in education in this area. So my, my um, region is from Midland to Port Huron, the East China schools, uh, the Genesee schools, all the Genesee County schools, and all of the thumb. That's the area that, that I work in. I'm currently working, I just finished up with Genesee, which is a very small district, um, and I'm currently working with the East China schools, which is, if you're familiar with the East China schools, is more similar to, to the uh, Midland public schools quite as big, but um, uh, um, certainly uh, with some more affluent areas and with some areas of um, uh, uh, some diversity in their, their economics. So, so it's a uh, very similar school. Um, 
I was a, the, I was a um, uh, principal at Unionville Seabwing. I was a superintendent in Deckerville. I was a superintendent in Imlay City for 12 years, and I ended my career as the ISD superintendent in Sanilac County. If you divide up the, the region and, and look at the other consultants, that the other presidents of regions uh, to the north of us, uh, we have um, Mark Eckert, who was the ISD superintendent in Charlevoix for years. Uh, he is part of the MLI team. And to the west of us here is Scott Crosby, who has, was at the Wexford Pasaki ISD for, for uh, for several years. That helps us in that we have a very good network around uh, the state of Michigan. When we advertise for your position, we start recruiting. It's not just me that's recruiting, it's all of MLI. So it's all of those presidents from around the region that will start recruiting for, for this position. That makes a big difference in the type of pool that we will get from the state of Michigan. Um, we advertise online through MLI, through the Michigan Association of uh, School Administrators. Um, we also contact all of the ISD superintendents, tell them what we have, that Midland Public Schools is open, have them start searching. So we, we have a good network within the state. Outside of the state, um, the, the founder of Michigan Leadership Institute was Dr. Tim Quinn. Uh, he was uh, uh, with the Michigan Leadership Institute for probably 10 years, sold the company, and took his business national. Um, so he has the Broad Academy, which is, which is the Michigan Leadership gone national. And we have our we have our affiliations with with Dr. Quinn. So for a position like this, as we start looking for candidates, we will also have have the Broad Academy that will be will be looking for candidates. Um, the other difference in how we do business, how I do business, is that I represent you, and I take that I take that very seriously. Um, the applicants, when they apply for this job, I'm the first voice on the other end of the phone. Um, I'm the one they're going to call for questions. So it's important that I get that right, and it's important that I represent I represent you well, and I and I work hard at that. As soon as someone um, applies, I give them a call and I make sure that I answer their concerns, I answer their questions, um, and I spend some time with them. It's important in my mind for, for these applicants to know that, that um, you're on task, uh, that you have a plan, and that you care about their concerns. So, so we work very hard at, at, um, at that. Um, the other is that uh, and other companies guarantee, but, but we're with you until you find a satisfactory candidate. Uh, once we uh, start a search, if we got through the whole process, and that's never happened to me, but if we got through the whole process and we couldn't find who you were looking for, um, I don't go away. I stay here and, I, and, and we, we work at it until we find a satisfactory uh, candidate. The other is the support that we offer. Not all companies offer the support after the search is over. Once the search is over and you, and you select a uh, new superintendent, um, I'm available for a year to mentor and work with the, with the new superintendent to answer questions, um, to be available uh, for them. Um, we also have a um, orientation workshop. I call it an expectations workshop for the board and the new superintendent. There is the best way to start off a relationship with a board and the superintendent is to make sure that the expectations are clear, that, that the 
new superintendent knows what you want them to do and that you have some idea what you what the new superintendent is expecting out of you so we do that and um, as a way to start off a a good relationship um, also uh, throughout the year I'm available to usually the board president if there's any kind of concerns that you can't work out yourself or um, it just takes a phone call and then we'll sit down and we'll we'll try to solve uh, small problems before they become big problems um, and I help boards through that um, that doesn't happen very often that I get a call from a board president, but on occasion that does. And I'll, we'll come over and, and we'll work things out. Usually those calls come if the board changes all of a sudden, if there's a big shift in board members and, you, and, and all of a sudden you have a couple new board members that have total, totally different expectations than what, what um, um, was expected. And we can work through those, those things, but it's important in our mind that uh, we continue to support you and the, the new superintendent. Um, that really is what, what makes us different. If you look at the packet that I gave you, um, I just went through the letter and you can, you, you can read that letter yourself. I encourage you to check references. I and I encourage you to check references on Michigan Leadership Institute. Um, you will find that our references are excellent, but I also encourage you to, to check me out. Um, the other difference um, from, some, from some of the search firms is I'm your guy. I'm the one who you will get to know. I'm the person on the other end of the line. Um, I am here when you, you need me, when the, when the, um, interviews take place, I'll be here. I'm the one will that, that will conduct the uh, 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 in-services and the workshops. Some of the other firms um, will bid out and get jobs and then they will subcontract out the search to someone else. You're not necessarily, you, you don't necessarily know who you're gonna end up with. Um, so you need to be comfortable with me and the way to do that is to, is to check me out. So let me just real quickly for you, and I won't rattle them all off. I, I've been doing this for three and a half years since I retired from Sanilac ISD. I'm currently working with the uh, East China uh, board and doing a search. Um, I have uh, just finished up tonight uh, the, the Genesee schools, which is a very small school. Uh, so don't confuse it with the ISD, it's the, the Genesee schools. Um, I've done uh, Goodrich, Clio, Swartz Creek, uh, Beecher, um, In the Thumb, I, um, uh, Deckerville, uh, Marlette, Unionville, Seabuing, uh, Sandusky, um, Peck, those are the ones that I can I can think of right at this point. Um, I also do Michigan Leadership is known as a search firm. I think if you were to ask, they'd say search firm. We do a lot of other things. We're a full service company. Um, so I've done strategic planning and um, this Saturday I'm working with the Elmont Board of Education on their, their annual goals. Um, in the middle of March, I'm working with the Marlette schools on a new board member uh, orientation. They have two new board members and they wanna do an orientation, so we're doing that. Um, and again, I've done uh, strategic planning and goal setting and just a variety of things. It's a uh, great position to have. Um, if, you, if you look at the timeline our timeline is a 12-week timeline. Um, actually, um, uh, let me back up a little bit. I jumped ahead. Um, we have a three-part search process, um, and it's probably very similar to other people's search processes. 
Um, but let me say one thing. Um, uh, the most important part is the planning. The most important part is the preparation. If we do the preparation and the planning right, everything will fall into place. Um, when we're doing the planning and the preparation, I would ask the board to set aside some dates. I would ask everybody to have their calendar. I would expect that we would confirm those dates and then we have to stick with them. Now, I know it's, it's uh, not a perfect world and I know we have, we have um, uh, things that come up along the way, but we need to stick as close as we can to those, to those dates um, or the whole search prolongs and we get into graduation exercises and we start, you are busy people and if you start trying to change dates in the middle of this, it becomes really difficult to do. So the, the preparation is, is the most important. The other part of the preparation is me meeting with focus groups um, with, uh, and that would be who, whoever you would choose, teachers, uh, all employees, union people, parents, um, uh, band boosters, athletic boosters, um, whoever you want me to meet with, I would meet with. We would have to have at least one evening meeting, I would think, for the general public. Um, and I ask three questions. Um, I need to know I need to know uh, what the uh, points of pride are for the district. I need to know what the challenges are going to be. And I need to know what people are looking for in a new superintendent. Points of pride I need um, for two reasons. One, I'm going to develop a brochure for you, which we'll publish. But the, the, the real important reason to me is, remember, I'm the first person on the other end of that phone. Um, I've been around. I think I know Midland, but I don't know. I don't know Midland. I, I, I could, uh, I, I couldn't do you justice unless I have people tell me what your points of pride are. So I need to know when they answer, when I, when I pick up the phone and they say, you know, why should I bring my family and move to Midland? I need to be able to tell them and I need to be accurate. It's important that I'm accurate <laughs> about that. Um, and the same thing with the, with the challenges. We're looking to, to match people's experiences and skills with the challenges that they're going to have here. Um, I need to know what those challenges are. A year from now, I don't want the new superintendent to be in trouble and say to me, if you would have told me, um, I would never have applied. Um, so I need to have open, honest, discussions with people and the only way for me to do that is to ask those two questions and then the uh, um, uh, superintendent traits um, are important as we recruit and try and match experiences and skills um, but again preparation 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 uh, once you have that done then things begin to fall into place um, again, we will recruit for this position uh, and recruit aggressively. Um, um, I would at some point, if, if chosen, ask you if there's anyone around that you want me to recruit. And I will, if there's somebody you want me to go after, I will go after them. Um, finding the right person for a job this day and age doesn't mean sit back and see what happens. You've got to You've got to work at it, and um, and we do that. Um, final stage uh, again is again. Uh, I, I do all the communications with all of the candidates, um, so I make sure um, I make sure that the candidates know what's going on, whether they are successful, unsuccessful, um, and I work very hard at that. And the reason I do is because there were many jobs in my career that I applied for that I never heard from. I never got a comment back. Um, I've even got a few stories where I went into interviews and never heard anything any, again. So um, I feel like we need to, to treat the candidates with respect. 
to applicants with respect uh, and it makes you look good and frankly I can't do it any other way so that's that's the way that um, I would do that um, now if you look at the timeline we're talking about 12 weeks coming into the spring season with graduations uh, project graduations athletic contests all of those things that take place in the spring 12 weeks is pretty much what it will take uh, we can squeeze it a little bit if you wanted to but you know 10 weeks maybe but you, you really need to think about 12 um, and, and um, I haven't looked at a calendar so I didn't do the I don't know where that takes us but it certainly can be done before July 1 um, easily um, cost for our services is 13.5, and then there's uh, uh, 5,000 or 5,000. <laughs> I'm sorry, 500 dollar expenses, um, uh, and you'll spend the 500. You know, it says up to 500. You will spend the 500. If we we will go over. I know we will. Um, it, it's by the time we post online and and do odds and ends, the 500 dollars goes pretty quick. So. So don't, used to be when I, three and a half years ago when I started, we would uh, say up to $500 and we, and we might get away with um, 350 and it doesn't happen anymore. We spend the five. Um, so with that, questions, concerns? <coughs> Angela. Yes, ma'am. What's your view on recruiting from outside of Michigan versus in Michigan? Like in a district our size, would you recommend that we? Um, I think you're going to have both? to look. I think you're going to have to look at some from the outside, and I think you'll get some good applicants from the outside. I don't think it is necessary to go to someone from the outside. Um, um, my experience is that those that those with experience working in Michigan, know Michigan, know the political system, know, know the, uh, the ins and outs of Michigan and how, uh, and how we're operating and it makes it a little bit easier for them. Um, but, but good candidates from other states, um, you know, the, there, there may be a learning curve, but, but if they're good, there's not gonna be that much of a learning curve. I like it. I like Michigan candidates. Um, school district your size, I think you're going to look, I, mean, I think you're going to have some from the outside. I'd be surprised if you didn't get look at somebody from the outside. I have a, a couple. Yeah. Uh, it, it sounds like you wear a number of hats at MLI, um, it, which brings a question to my mind. Are you going to be the only person conducting this search or do you have a team of people that you work with yeah it's a team that we work with and it's all of the um, it is all of the uh, uh, Michigan presidents from Michigan leadership that will be working on um, uh, recruiting um, there's a, a clerical staff that helped me get through the the clerical ends ends of this um, but I'm going to be the face I'm going um, um, if we are if we are doing focus groups and I'm I'm sure that it take a couple of days here to do focus groups um, I may have someone come in and help me one of the other uh, uh, regional presidents but I will not turn it over to them to just come in by themselves and do that. I'll be here. I'll be here uh, along with them. So, so it looks like it's a collaboration with five other regional presidents? Yeah, I, yes, roughly. actually yeah, there's seven of us, but yes, okay. yeah, six others because Mike Wilmot is uh, uh, the CEO and um, anyway, yes. Okay, you, you had mentioned um, having a night meeting with the public uh, and I just kind of wanted you to, to expand on what is your what is what do you envision as being your community interaction with our district in terms of you know, how many meetings do you envision what uh, demographic are you going to 
bring into your search. Uh, I, just, I thought I was hoping you could expand on that a little more. Sure, absolutely. Um, um, I will. Um, I, I'll work with you as a board and set up as many different community meetings as we need. Um, um, I like to work with as many different diverse groups within the community as I can. Um, that's why I'm saying I don't think focus groups can be done in, in one day. It's going to take it at least two days. Example, East China, um, I was there two days. I started one morning at um, 8 o'clock, um, and I worked through, the, uh, through a meeting with the community in the evening. I was back at 7 o'clock the next morning, and I worked right through until about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I met with, well, every 45 minutes, um, I was meeting with a different group, and it was the groups that they wanted me to see. So, um, so I would encourage you to get me as many diverse groups as you can. I would encourage you to get me to them instead of them coming to me. Um, because if they have to come to me, they get lost. It's easier for me to, to go to them. Um, um, so, so whatever you want, whoever you want me to work with, I, I would work with. Is that? Oh. Yeah. No. That that that. Uh, one more point of clarification. I guess I needed. Does that mean that you would need the board to set up the individual meetings for you to attend? Uh, no, I'll work with. Uh, oh, I, okay. I would ask. Mechanically. <laughs> Be him and Cindy doing those organizations. It'll be us to incumbent on us to identify the groups. Gotcha. Yeah, you would identify the groups, and then there's got to be there's going to have to be someone on staff that you designate to be my. That's what I thought, but I wasn't <laughs> going to say <laughs> to be my helper, to be my you know to, to get me through uh, those things. The the big problem is that I don't know any of your schedules. So if I was going to meet with. Uh, bus drivers might be the best that I meet with them before they get on their routes but you've got so many bus drivers you may have them coming and going all the time and it may be there might be an ideal time to do that and that's what what I'd like to do and I need I need the, the district knowledge to be able to figure those things out okay thank you okay. anybody else I have one question um, you mentioned the Broad Academy was that the Eli Broad Academy that you work with um, candidate. I've never referred to I've, I've always heard it referred to as the Broad Academy so I well is it affiliated with Michigan State University or out yeah, in California are most of the candidates from California or do they travel to the Academy and then they're from Michigan they're f um, most of them are from out of state and not all from California no from around okay Anybody else? I'll touch the ones uh, before. Um, in your experience in the last several years, mm -hmm. how many <coughs> placements would you have said resulted because you went out and recruited someone you knew would be good for the job that wasn't necessarily responding to postings versus people who responded to postings? Um, two. Out of uh, ten or twelve, okay, based on that, um, and I think the, that um, um, some of the searches that I do with the smaller schools in the in the the Thumb region, um, well, you know, now that I think about, it, there's probably more because there's more. I, I you know, the, I, I, there's probably more in those smaller schools than I've. Than I was going to add up through my head, but um, uh, because we're always talking and out working on those those smaller school ones, but um, two that I officially picked up the phone and said, "Get your name in." Okay. I guess is what I. Th those are the names that came to me. Have you had many in the last several years boards that basically said, "I'm not really happy with this slate. Go bring me another one." No, I've not had that problem. That actually, the opposite has been true. They've been very happy, um, um, and some pretty um, uh, 
boards that are not always ag um, agree with one another, split boards that, that I thought we were going to have those problems. So I've never had that problem. Okay. Um, you do salary survey and data? I can do that, yes. Um, and I usually work with the uh, um, local ISDs to come up with salary surveys and bring salary sur surveys to you, yes. If you and let's see, you had the examples of the public input. Um, a little, little less, I'll call it a selection of a search firm question, but an education question for us as a board. Uh, with the housing issues that have been experienced in the past four or five years, uh, what have you found the propensity of candidates to geographically relocate has been? It's getting harder and harder. Um, when I was a superintendent and um, uh, was moving from, or just an administrator, moving from one, from one district to another, um, I'd find the job, I'd move, and my wife and family would go with me, and my wife would quit her job, and she'd find another job. Um, um, it's just not that way anymore. It's, re it's really tough. Um, um, there, are, um, there are candidates that are um, doing that, but it, again, it gets harder and harder because you're looking at you're usually looking at a package, a, a husband and wife, that where the husband and, uh, you know, the wife takes the job as superintendent, the husband has to find another job, or they end up living apart for periods of time, um, and, it, and it is harder and harder. Um, um, most superintendents feel the need to live within the district and become part of the district. I did. Um, I think there's a little bit different different definition of being part of the district. I think you've got to look at them being part of the district but not necessarily living here for a while because they need to sell their house. The last position I took was Sanilac ISD and, um, and they said to me, um, uh, well, will you move into Sanilac County? And I said, you know, never say never, but I don't, I don't think so. I've got my house, my wife's got a job I've already got another house trailing behind us that we haven't been able to sell I said I don't I think I'm gonna have to drive and I did while that while I was there now that doesn't mean I wasn't involved it just means that it, it wasn't you know it wasn't feasible for us to move I, I suspected this was gonna be your answer let me go to the next question then on that have you found the prime candidate that the board wanted to select turn down opportunities because of those issues? No, I have not. We've been able to uh, work through those, no. Either the board gave up on requirements a bit or? Um, <coughs> yes, you know, you know, obviously um, uh, boards can no longer require it. It's against I the understand, law. yeah. Um, but, but you can strongly urge, mm -hmm. so you can, you can, back off on your expectation. If you find the right person, uh, it takes a while, but they want to be here. They really, you know, they, they can't do the job if they're not here. So, um, you know, I, after a while, um, they'll work it out, especially once they feel like um, things are going okay. You know, you give them a two, three year contract, say sell your house and come, and then, you know, everything's iffy. Um, if after a couple of years they're here and things are going well and everything's getting along fine and they need to get here, they start making those those changes. It just takes longer. Okay. Any other questions? That was the end of mine. Have you found many non-traditional candidates for the schools that you worked with? Uh, yes, I have. And where where boards of education, with, it's been my experience where boards of education have said, bring us non-traditional candidates. When I do, um, they, don't, they don't get the job. Um, uh, they, they, when it comes down to um, an experienced educator with that background compared to a non-traditional, I haven't had a board go with the non-traditional. And we've, and we've brought them 
non-traditional, and I and I and and I don't see anything wrong with looking at non-traditional. I think you need to look at them. But my experience has been when when it gets down to um, voting yes or no, they go with the other. Any others? Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. you know, we will, we will really be taking, appreciate. We will be taking a recommendation to follow up on some of the references. Great. All right. And Do you have a timeline? And, to... Okay. On Tuesday, March 5th, we're having a special board meeting to select. That's a week from now. Great. And so you should be hearing back from us in a week. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank, Thank you for your time. Yep. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it a bunch. Um, Cindy has informed me since we delayed the last candidate, we need to bring this candidate in. We'll take the break right after this company is done. Is that will that work? That's fine. Who's coming in next? Okay. Um, where's my agenda? Our next our next candidate is uh, Dr. Jim Morris from Hazard Young and Atia out of Chicago area. And the next two search firms we'll hear from are national search firms versus the two Michigan-based search firms that we've heard from already. Morris, welcome. Thank you. Or Dr. Morris, I should say. Oh, okay, thank you. Organized here. No, uh, I'll pass some so thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Kim Danger Collins, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. I have a little packet here for you. Hi, Jim. Okay. Scott McCormick. Scott, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for your time. Jim, thank you for coming all the way up. Yes. Hi, I'm Gordon Brandstad. Yes. Hi. Hi, I'm Yvonne Gordon. Jim Morris, good to see you. Carl, I wanted Carl, to see you. Good to see you. Wanted to leave two for the other two board members that aren't yes, here. Yes, these are yes. the other two board members. All right, members. we'll right. give those to Mr. And we've received a lot of this already, too, so they should have the electronic version. Oh, okay. Well, thanks again for inviting me. This is, as you know, uh, one of your most important jobs is selecting a new superintendent. And... Uh, I represent Hazard Young Atiyah and Associates. Uh, we're the largest uh, superintendent search firm in the country. We have over 100 consultants around the country uh, that we can call on to research candidates, suggest candidates. We specialize in high expectation, high achieving school districts. In fact, the last four searches I've been involved in have been uh, districts of your size with two high schools, three middle schools, and so on. So I'm very familiar with uh, your uh, quality of district. And that is a very important point, to be knowledgeable about high expectation districts, because there's a big difference between the community expectations, and uh, so our firm specializes in those kinds of districts. In fact, we did your last search, or did a search for you previously. So. Um, we're very happy to do that. I've given you a packet of information and just let me quickly look, uh, share with you some of the information. On the left side is uh, our research on effective superintendents. We're a multifaceted firm. We have research base also and this gives you uh, research on effective superintendents. We can provide workshops and support for the new superintendent during the first year including working with you on evaluations. Uh, having a role workshop, which is critical when you first hire a new superintendent. So all those services are available through our firm. And we uh, do that with many school districts. And you look on the right side of your packet, you have the superintendent search flow chart, which I'll be talking about. And then you have the uh, sheet listing the desired characteristics of superintendents. And we put a survey on your website, and we can do it in several languages. If you have Hispanics, uh, Spanish speaking, or other languages, we can include that on your website. And then we ha encourage uh, folks in your community to uh, respond to that uh, survey, and then we provide you with a whole summary and um, detailed information on those reports. 
that's in addition to the focus groups that we come in several days and work with your community uh, on groups that you would suggest. It could be uh, certainly I've done uh, recently students, board members, administrators, support staff, teachers, uh, community members, senior citizens, faith-based groups, uh, whatever groups you set up, we will come in and uh, if I need additional associates, I can bring those folks in to conduct those focus groups. Then you will get a full executive summary of the focus groups and the survey to indicate what profile you want in your new superintendent. And then I meet with you as a board, present that to you. If you agree with that, then I use that as a base for uh, seeking the new superintendent. Now, we just don't accept applications as part of that process. We actually go out and recruit people because you don't necessarily want just people who are applying. You want someone who's doing well where they are now and we could uh, encourage them to come to Midland and uh, lead you for the next uh, 5, 10, 15 years. So that's our goal and that's our expertise. So uh, the other thing is in terms of getting references, it's very important that you not only look at the references in the application, which are always good, but I can call a consultant in Illinois and say, tell me about so-and-so in that district. Can you get some information on them? Or in Virginia, or in New York, or wherever that person is, I can call on people in our firm and have them support me getting information on a candidate. So we actually go out and recruit candidates for your position, not just, it, we don't just accept applications, which is very critical. Then in the back of the right side also, we have the Baker Urbanks uh, investigative report, and on your final candidate, included in your fee, is a comprehensive report on your final candidate, including credit checks, uh, civil and criminal record checks, credentials checks, because we don't want to embarrass you, we don't want to embarrass our firm, so it's very critical that you have a thorough background check in addition to the references that I would do, that our firm would do, um, we would do a thorough background check on your final candidate and present that. It, now that's confidential information, I'd probably share it with the board president or whatever if we had any problem we would certainly be able to discuss it, but it would not become public, of course. So that's the, uh, the process. So let me, uh, any questions on my initial uh, process, okay? Um, we've had more than 20 years of service in the nation's school districts, more than 800 searches. Uh, as I mentioned, 100 uh, associates. Professional relationship with thousands of educational leaders. So I was past president of the Suburban Superintendents Association, uh, which is a national uh, association of uh, top suburban school districts. Um, and I was in East Grand Rapids for 25 years as superintendent. And uh, so uh, we have connections with all over the country with top uh, school districts in the country. Here are hey, some Jim, of the school Jim. districts hey, that Jim. we have worked in. Hey, Jim, yes. can I interrupt you just a second? I should have did this at the very beginning. If you have a cell phone, could you turn it off? Uh, sure. It, it does, the RF goes in and gives feedback to the TV. Oh, sorry. I, no, it's my fault. I should have said that before you started. I had vibe, but and, uh, I'll turn it off. I just want our public to be able to hear what you're having to say also, so I apologize. No problem. Sounds like an, in the airplane, right? <laughs> so as you can see, um, these are some of the school districts, uh, the school districts in Michigan that we've done searches. Again, uh, districts similar to yours. Uh, Gross Point has two high schools. I just did that search last year. Uh, Zeeland, um, Portage working on, uh, Lansing. Um, so you can see that uh, the districts that we've worked in. Uh, we customize each search to meet your needs as a school district. So in the planning session, if I'm select, if our firm is selected, I would meet within the next week or two with you and we would plan a time schedule for you to meet your time schedule and talk and listen to what you would like in a search. Uh, you would indicate to me who I should work with, if it's the president, which is normally the case, or a committee or whatever, we can 
accommodate that to communicate with those folks and also give reports, updates to the Board of Education through that person in terms of our progress. Uh, it, this is a national search. Uh, we offer the national search, um, or we can do the national search plus, which includes a year follow-up with your new superintendent, uh, or a basic search is another option. Uh, the planning phase is, um, again, we, uh, you, the board would select the, super, the search firm. Uh, what is your, do you have a timeline for when you're going to make that selection? We will be, uh, we'll be deciding next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. So you'll okay. hear from us wednesday -ish. Fine. Uh, as I mentioned, we'd be do the planning meeting with the board. Uh, then we'd do the stakeholder uh, input there, uh, via survey and focus groups. I would present the leadership report, as I indicated, defining the desired characteristics, the type of superintendent that you would like to have, and as much involvement of the district as possible. I've been particularly pleased with my work with students. Uh, in fact, I'm impressed with their comments. They are very fresh and unbiased, and they do a great job. In fact, when I give my reports, I usually include some student comments because they, they're pretty good. The only one I question is they say, call more snow days, well, so I really probably shouldn't include that one. Um, then we uh, conduct the initial interviews with the recommended slate. Um, let's see if I um, got that. Uh, oh, the recruitment phase. Um, we recruit candidates. Again, as I indicated, it might be a good match for the school district. Review applications, check references, both formal and confidential. And I would not present any candidate to you unless I had personally interviewed those candidates and checked them out with our other consultants. So uh, that's before I would present anyone to you as a board. Usually the board requests um, three to five candidates to be presented uh, for interviews. That's very critical because if we're interviewing current superintendents, they are very nervous in Michigan with the Open Meetings Act. Uh, so they're very concerned about having to, uh, the knowledge getting to their own school district that they're looking for a superintendency. So we have to be very careful, and I keep all of those very confidential um, as we move forward, and uh, the board tells me how many candidates you want presented. Now, we could present three, and then if you would like additional candidates, I can also do that, so we can talk about how you want to do that whole process. The key is keeping those in the final couple weeks is keeping folks in the search because number one, if they're a top candidate, which I assume you would get some top candidates, they're going to probably be looking at other districts. My job is to make sure that they feel like they're part of the final group and would stay in the search because you've seen, I think in Rochester, they had a candidate drop out. Um, and so my job is to keep them in the, <laughs> in the group to make sure you have adequate number of people to take a look at. So it's, it's really um, a challenging market today, folks. I mean, 20 years ago, we'd get 100 candidates. Now we get 20, 25 candidates. Jim, um, will you clarify for the board exactly up until what point the candidate, uh, candidacy can be held confidential? Uh, as long as we're holding the applications. Uh, it can be confidential. Once I present the applicants to you, they become public, and I would have to request those candidates okay to become public. Now, there are some other strategies. Uh, I've talked with Lisa uh, Swin um, at uh, Truins about this uh, that we can take a look at for some other options as long as the candidates' names are confidential at that point. But the board can't make any decisions uh, unless it's an open session regarding candidates, as you know. So we've got to make sure we follow the Open Meetings Act, and we certainly want to do that and would not want to get you in difficulty. Um, so we recruit the candidates, go out and go after them, and do some selection process. Um, then we uh, work with you, and when I would come back for the planning meeting with you, each of you, each of you would get a notebook with interview questions and the whole process of the interview, including the first interviews, the semifinalists, how we schedule those interviews, 
that whole process out outlined in that notebook for each board member. With possible interview questions, you certainly can customize those for yourself, for your own district, but we provide all that background information for you. And as I mentioned, we do the background check uh, by Baker's or Banks. Uh, and then if the board wants to do a site visit, uh, we uh, would encourage you to do that with the final candidate. And then we can negotiate a contract. So that whole process, which is outlined in the flow chart, is uh, the process we would use. And it's probably similar to other search firms. The difference is our background, our knowledge, the consultants we have, uh, working with high expectation school districts, understanding that whole process is critical to finding the top candidate. Uh, as I mentioned, I uh, was in uh, East Grand Rapids for 25 years, was in West Bloomfield, was previously on the North Shore of Chicago. Um, I was a uh, have been a professor with Michigan State University for 30 years, a visiting professor. Uh, I actually am a consultant for Michigan State University right now, assistant professor at Western Michigan University. I helped them start their PhD program in Grand Rapids at their Beltline campus. Um, and then I was professor and associate dean at National Lewis University in Evanston. So I have a background working in the North Shore of Chicago as well as uh, Michigan. I indicated this about our background and our uh, information. We have some guarantees also. We will stay with the search until the board is completely satisfied with the candidates interviewed, selected, and employed. So we stick with you to the very end. Uh, guarantee two, we will redo the search at no additional costs other than fees if the candidate or the board ends the employment within the first year. Thirdly, very important, we will not recruit or consider any candidate that's been placed with our assistance for a period of five years unless you give us permission to do that. So we're not going to come and grab your uh, outstanding superintendent and say, okay, we got another, a better job for you. <laughs> and we have a very good record, a very high percentage of our superintendents stay uh, five, ten years in the school district. Uh, because our goal, when we work with folks, we expect them to be uh, long-term uh, superintendents in the district where they're going. And, so and Jim, to give you a flavor, and if we hire you, you'll learn more about Midland. Um, yes. We will be selecting the seventh superintendent in over 100 years. Excellent, excellent. Okay. And that, our expectation. That, that's very important for candidates also. They want a stable school district. Uh, of course, the first question they'll ask me is, how's the board? So in our planning meeting, I'll talk with you about how do you work together? Are you a team player? Because, the, interesting, you think that we're researching the, su the superintendent candidate, but in fact, they're also researching the Board of Education. And I'm talking about the person we want, which who is a, uh, a successful person right now. They're happy where they are now in their school district. They have a good board. They're doing well, their family's there, so I have to convince them to take a good look at Midland Public Schools and say, this is another, this is an outstanding school district uh, where your children can, if you have children in the schools, they can go to school, to excellent schools, which is very important. And then we also work with the spouse uh, to make sure when we bring the candidate in that we develop a program for the spouse with you to encourage them to look at the community and be a part of that whole process because as you know that can be 50 percent or more of the decision so that's very critical also any questions on our guarantees uh, in your proposal you have the fees and those include the work of the associates their basic uh, fee all materials and support provided we also have a uh, full-time office in, uh, in North Shore Chicago uh, and a secretary um, and a staff there who support us in our whole search process. So that's also important. The expenses include uh, associate travel, candidate travel, board meeting expenses, and advertising. And we can talk at our planning meeting about 
what kind of advertising you want to do. Much of it is uh, we usually don't even develop brochures anymore. That's kind of passe, you know, because everyone's electronic today. They go to the internet. So actually, you, some districts like to put a, an ad in the uh, ed, Education Week, but uh, quite frankly, when pe people are looking for jobs, they're looking on the internet anyway. So we can do that with a minimal cost in terms of advertising and still cover the whole background. Plus, we share it with our consultants across the nation, which is another good process. Um, so we do leadership needs assessments, succession planning, governance workshops, and any additional services in our research uh, group can do other strategic planning, data analysis, those program evaluations, those kinds of things, whatever you serve. So we're whatever you need, so we're a full service firm. So our primary goal is to assist you with selecting leaders. We will customize the search and share the knowledge and expertise we have gained from conducting more than 800 searches. And uh, we have, as I indicated, a breadth and depth to our firm to support you. So that's, uh, that's Hazard Young Atia, and I'm very pleased to represent them, and uh, I would love to be a part of helping you find your next superintendent. I'm confident with the reputation of your district, this would be a great district to work with because of uh, the uh, work that uh, Mr. Ellinger has done and the board to working together as a team. And uh, that's going to be very important as we look for a candidate for your school district. Questions? Pleasure the board. Yes. So you said right now you're currently working with another district. How, how many? You mentioned Portage, I think. How Portage. many other districts are you working with None. right now? Just Portage. Okay. And how? What? What point are they at? Uh, we're in the. Uh, I'm understanding what's We're going in the candidates. So I'm uh, presenting the fo the uh, executive profile to them next uh, week, and then we'll be in the uh, recruitment stage and uh, 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 with interviews in April. So you don't see any conflict in no. working with both? No. Because I think it's actually, probably a pretty similar. Actually, district. it's a it's very similar. Yeah. And it's it would actually work well because I would be really looking for similar candidates. Right. That's what I was for both districts, that. and so I could just expand that whole process, and uh, it, it it might work out quite well in terms of that whole process, and there wouldn't be a conflict. Uh, I have the flexibility to come and work with you. That's not a problem. So. What's the typical timeline like for you? Like 12 to 18 weeks, and we had discussed that at the planning meeting, and we had set up uh, also there's a, I think, a chart there of the uh, uh, agenda for the planning meeting and a typical timeline, and we'd sit down and uh, with, your, with the board, and we would plan that whole timeline to meet your needs. What's your thought in terms of your... Uh, would you like someone on July 1st? Yeah, uh, yeah. obviously. That's the, yeah. that's well, exactly. I, think you're, I think you're in a good timeline right now. This is the prime timeline for getting candidates. So uh, I think we could do that with uh, probably interviews late April, um, uh, and we could probably get this done uh, beginning of May or middle May kind of thing, um, end of May potentially. We'll have to see how all of that work with your schedule also. Again, it's part of your availability to meet and uh, go through that process. Scott, Kim? No questions. <coughs> How do you engage the community? How do I engage the community? I work with you if you have a communications person. Uh, I work with that person and uh, at the planning meeting we'll talk about what groups you would like me to be involved with. And then I would work with your communication per person to set up those groups. So typically, I'll go and actually meet with students at the high school if they have a government group or they want a broader selection of students, I can do that. Senior citizens group. So I will make myself available and bring another associate if needed to make sure we cover all the bases. So whichever groups you want uh, interviewed, and then I develop a whole report for you on what those groups have said. And we ask them what are the um, strengths of the district because I need to know from the board and from the community. I have to sell the district to the candidates, so that's important to hear from the community. Uh, 
Two, then I ask them, what are the issues and concerns that you're concerned about? So this is good information for the board also. And then the last is, what are the characteristics that you would like to see in a new superintendent? And then I provide that whole profile to you along with the survey. And typically we'll get four to 800 responses on the web-based survey on your website, which is another great opportunity for people to participate in that whole process. And we ask them to identify if they're a student, administrator, support staff, teacher, or community member. I'll also typically, um, have, I like to meet with business groups in the area also. So if you have a business leadership group, I love to maybe have a luncheon with them and get feedback from them. Uh, whatever groups, faith-based groups, uh, minority groups, whatever groups you would like to get some input from, we make ourselves available for that process. You're just one day short, Jim. We just uh, hosted a luncheon for 30 key community oh. leaders and business groups today at noon. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> we can yeah. we can work something out. I mean, I, yeah. I I do breakfast yeah. coffees with people, breakfast meetings, whatever yeah. evening. Me oh, and then we do typically one or two um, because you're a larger district. Uh, maybe we'd offer a couple uh, community meetings. Maybe one in the evening and maybe one in during the day. PTA PTA or PTO groups. We'd meet with also administrators, support staff, teachers, especially with your uh, teachers association. Very critical that we get feedback. And not only do I listen to their comments, but I give them a feedback sheet, which they fill out for me with those three questions. And then I summarize all of that information and provide that to you in my executive summary that I provide for you uh, when we complete that process. We have a history of uh, broad participation in this process, the few times we've done it. And uh, it'll be uh, quite a range of folks from foundations to major corporations to Great. chambers of commerce to parents to students. Yes. It'll, it'll be a wide, wide swath. That's great. And, and I think it's very important that the board be transparent in this whole process and have the community feel like they're part of the process. Now, I make it very clear on the feedback sheets that we are seeking input, the board and I are seeking input for a potential superintendent, but the board has the legal responsibility in the final decision. You have to be clear with folks because they're not actually making the decision, but you as representatives of the community are making that final decision. But you are very interested in their input and their ideas, and that's what uh, we want to give that information out to the community. Any other questions? I have I have several. Yes, I'll hit sir. you with. Uh, I'm the only board member here who's been through one of these. So. Oh, okay. okay. So I can. Uh, well, it's one of the most important things you're going to be doing, the as you know. The most important thing. Yep. Yes. Experientially uh, learned a lot. Um, do you do salary surveys and data collection to guide us into what our competitors for the same type of individual will be seeking? Uh, that's very important, and we can do that with you. Now, t today, it's much easier because everything's transparent. So we can do uh, go to ISDs and get information, or I can go to websites on school districts and get that information. Of course, as you know, if you've been reading the newspaper, the Mackinac Center did that s whole research on superintendent salaries. Some of it was not really accurate, but um, I think most of it was pretty general and so on. Um, in fact, I wanted to write a response to some of those articles as people were complaining about it and say, folks, I do superintendent searches and there's not a lot of people that want these jobs. So you're going to have to pay fairly. And I think most people understand that a good superintendent uh, is going to be making an executive kind of salary. So that's very important. But yes, I would assist you and work with you on getting that information and determining what would be a good range for your school district, depending on, again, the person's experience and that kind of thing. Um, have you ever presented in the last couple of years, I always I try to frame all these questions in the last two to three years, have you ever presented a slate of candidates to a board and the board basically saying, hmm, not quite there, go find us some others? No, but that is a possibility and I would have in my back pocket some additional candidates if, uh, you know, on, on my A list, I would have a, another group of folks that maybe didn't meet the three to five group, um, but meet the uh, 
would be the next, uh, instead of, if I give you five candidates, I've probably got six and seven there also as a possibility. Now the other thing we can do, now this would be a little different, but this, some districts are doing that, actually going after people, specific people, and uh, limiting how many we're going to get. Because if you want this particular person, um, and uh, you say to me, Jim, go and find us a top candidate, and uh, to protect that person's confidentiality, you know, that's another option. And some districts are doing that because of the challenge of finding top-notch people and the hesitancy of sitting superintendents in Michigan to put their name forth publicly. It's a real problem in Michigan. In Illinois, you don't find that candidate until the board appoints them. Hmm. And if you're a community member interviewing that person, you sign an affidavit that you will not release that name. So they get tons of candidates. But in Michigan, it's a much more challenging process, as you know. Now, you know, assistant superintendents, high school principals, those folks are expected to do searches, so nobody gets excited about those folks. But sitting superintendents um, is a real challenge. So I have to go out and recruit those folks and say, I was just talking to one today, top-notch person. I said, okay, you know, think about this. It, it's really uh, the district I'm looking at. It's a really super district. And so I would talk because I was um, part of the faculty of the credentialing group with M MASA in Michigan. And so I worked with a lot of these young superintendents across the state getting credentials through MASA. So I know a lot of these folks around the state. And I can call them up and say, John or Mary, are you interested in a top-notch school district? And I can keep you confidential up to a certain point. Um, and if you're one of the you know, three or four candidates that I'm going to present, at a certain point we'll have to, you'll have to agree to make your name public. But uh, I'll keep you confidential up until that point. The other thing I, could do, I can do is give you a summary of some candidates without names and without uh, districts, but give you, so I've got this candidate who's in a suburban school district, two high school district, or one large high school district, uh, top-notch academics, top-notch co-curricular, band, music, and sports, and uh, you know all this background. These are three candidates I have. What do you think about are these potentials for you? Because then I don't have to release the names. So that's another option. So we, we can, and I'd work with your attorney. Do you use Truins at all? Or Yeah. So uh, do you lose, use Lisa Swin at all? John Bonato. John Bonato, yeah, I've worked with him also. So we, we could work, we'd make sure that you're protected and doing it properly under the Open Meetings Act. But in this market, we've got to figure out ways to go after these top-notch people, protect them, but then legally present them at an appropriate time um, in, in public. Okay. Um. What's your experience of bringing non-Michigan people into Michigan school districts? Uh, have been successful, many of them, uh, many boards accept that? Uh, if you're doing a national search, boards li like to see some out-of-state candidates, and I think that's a good way to check, even if you have um, uh, regional candidates or in-state candidates, to check the credentials against what's out there in other states. But there are also uh, folks in Illinois and Indiana and surrounding states that, uh, you know, some of the superintendents can retire at 50 in their home state and, and uh, serve another 15 years in another state. So that's a possibility also uh, with an outstanding school district. And confidentiality, uh, confidentiality is less of a problem with those folks also. Have you had many of those in the last three years that have been successfully uh, some. placed? Some. Some, okay. Yeah, but um, not a lot. Do you conduct background checks? In Absolutely. Background checks? Absolutely. And again, be with our background of other yeah. people, yeah. we can uh, yeah. pick up that, that information. I'm sorry. Plus the, uh, as I mentioned, the final one we do on the final candidate. Apologize for that last question. You went in depth. No problem. That. Sorry about that. Um, that's the list of my questions. We will definitely be getting back to you, I think, Wednesday of next week. Okay. Great. And we will be doing the um, the
reference checks as we go through today. All right. Here's my card. Thank you. Here's my phone number, so feel free to call it. Great. If you have, have any, we have questions? Any questions, uh, give me a call. And uh, I'm really excited about Midland and your schools. And uh, I would also get to know your schools so that I could share that with your candidates also. So okay. that would be an important part of the whole process. And I do that through the focus groups. Uh, where I talk with the various groups and administrators and teachers and those folks. I forgot I have to be on camera here, so sorry. <laughs> and Mike. <laughs> but, <laughs> and the mic. So um, that's a big part of it. But uh, this is the kind of district I like to work with. Um, and uh, I think we could really find you an outstanding candidate for superintendent in spite of the challenging times. But, you know, you hire the best for the challenging times, right? Well, Jim, I did have one more question. I'm yeah. sorry. What I, I don't think I've asked you this to start. You know, the blurs when you start doing multiple. Even if terms. you do, that's fine. Have you? What's been your experience? Educate the board. This is not an interview question. Let's educate the board. What has been your experience in the last three-ish years on the housing and reload issues for candidates, in terms of them being stuck with houses? It's how, a how challenge. How much is that whittling down the pool? Etc. It's a challenge. Forty percent of the superintendents in Michigan own two homes, and they're not already. <laughs> they're wow. the home from the past district. So that plus the spouse, uh, pr possibly not getting uh, being able to get a position in um, in the new district, or I'm not as a teacher, but uh, a position. In fact, my wife uh, led the search at our church, uh, Westminster in, in Grand Rapids. Um, and uh, the, the challenge was not getting the pastor. The challenge was the, his wife was a pathologist, a physician, and the challenge was finding a job for her <laughs> hmm. in order to get him to come to the church. So it's kind of interesting. The spouse can be a big factor, and this is why we work with you as a board and community <coughs> to make sure in the, certainly the final two or three candidates or semifinalists that we provide a, an opportunity for the spouse to come in that they wish and see your community and you know perhaps look at real estate or whatever they'd like to see what the opportunities are in the community for them also. So that's an important part. Thank you. You're welcome. Very, very much. Thanks for your patience I'll look forward to hearing to from present you. To. Um, we will not adjourn. We will take a break uh, for 10 minutes. Um, our next firm was scheduled for 9 o'clock, um, so we will make this rather brief. The faster the better, no more than 10. I'd like to start at, uh, at 12 after at the latest. City, are they here? Yeah. Okay, so tell them we're going to start at 9, 12. Okay. You know okay. Come on, guys, get with it. Here we go. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, our break is over. I guess I won't say re-adjourning. We have uh, Mr. Larry Lobert from School Exec. Um, first of all, this is the Middle Public School Board. Uh, welcome. It sounds very strange. If you have a cell phone on, you may want to turn it off, unpower it, only because it interferes and puts feedback. It's not on, but, uh, okay. Radio yeah, you got to depower because the radio frequency transmissions go into the mic. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and up front, um, you will hear a response from us by next Wednesday. Oh, thank you. We have a special meeting on Tuesday to select, and so you'll hear from me on, on the Wednesday. Well, thanks very much. Okay. Am I on? Yes, you are. Well, thank you very, very much for the opportunity, uh, President Wasserman and uh, members of the board, for the opportunity to be here this evening. We're, we're just delighted to be part of the search, part of the search uh, consideration anyway. Um, I know you've had a long evening, so I will be as efficient as I can possibly be in my remarks uh, and save time for your questions. Don't mistake any of that for uh, any lack of enthusiasm. We very much would love to do the, uh, the Mid Midland Public Schools superintendent search, and we indeed feel very equipped to do that. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to start and talk just a little bit about the consultants who would be involved in this process. First, just a few words about, uh, about me. I probably come to this uh, from a unique perspective uh, from many of the folks who you will be talking with or have been talking with. Um, I'm 
I'm not a superintendent and uh, haven't been one. I'm not going to be one. I'm a human resources person and have been an HR person my entire career. Uh, consider it my, my passion. But I have had the opportunity to work with uh, districts like Midland, uh, high performing school districts, high achieving school districts. I retired from, as Gross Point's assistant superintendent, had the opportunity to work with New Trier, uh, um, just an outstanding uh, school district on the North Shore of Chicago. Um, and I really spent most of my time, uh, most of my career, uh, studying this whole business of selection and hiring and, and trying to help apply more science to it. Uh, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to partner with a, a, a research uh, a gentleman from Wayne State University, Dr. Uh, John Arnold, and we developed some pre-employment inventories which are used for, uh, as part of the hiring process for teachers and support professionals. So I say that just to make the point that I think there's a science to hiring, and, and I think that firms that look at a human resource perspective in addition to, be, to a, a experienced superintendents is, is a good, is a very good thing. Um, just because you were a superintendent doesn't mean you know how to hire superintendents. I, I think there, is, there are methodologies, and this firm has been very uh, open about suggesting ideas, uh, about taking suggestions on ideas for improving our process. Um, so HR is, is really my thing and what brings me to this work. Um, you'd be joined also in the search uh, by uh, Mr. David Peterson, who is just a seasoned veteran of this process. He's a partner in the firm. He would personally be uh, very involved in this search. Uh, Dave is a former uh, superintendent with just outstanding background and experiences and uh, instincts about hiring. Uh, Dr. Carol Kleenow uh, is also a, uh, a retired superintendent with Oakland Schools, but actually now has returned and is doing some, some work with online education uh, with them. Uh, she's not a, re uh, not a superintendent of Oakland. She's a, uh, a, an assistant who was an associate with them, but has done some interims and a lot of uh, administrative work. So it's a firm. Uh, the, the partners that would be working on this search are all Michigan uh, people. Uh, familiar with the, the challenges of an organization like, like Midland. Um, we are an Illinois-based firm, however, with uh, 45 uh, consultants all told. Uh, we've been in the business for uh, nine years and have about 200 searches to our credit with uh, a pretty good, uh, very strong results in, in, uh, in, in those 200 searches. Um, before I go on and tell you any, any more about our process, though, I do want to point to this document that I put at your places, which we call our, our credo, our credo uh, because it's the starting point for our discussion uh, about what we do and why we do it. Um, and indeed, it's the starting point of, of this firm. Uh, these 45 uh, folks who are involved in uh, the search process uh, really come to this work out of a passion about education. They're, uh, as I say, all educators. Uh, they do this not uh, uh, necessarily for any profit. We put a, a tremendous amount of time into these searches. It's not, uh, there's an easier way <laughs> to make a living when you count your hours up. But they do it really out of a commitment uh, to continue contributing back uh, what they've been involved with throughout their careers, and, and they're just some exceptional people in our firm. Um, so first and foremost, our responsibility and our credo, we say, is to, to the students of, of America's schools, helping to contribute to a quality education. That's what drives us. Um, but of course, next and most important, we're responsible to you. We are a board search firm. It's our job to bring you the best methodology, the best possible services we can, um, and uh, to help use the experience we've had to help you avoid any errors along the way. And there are lots of missteps that you can have in this process. Um, it's our responsibility to, build, to bring you outstanding, ethical, uh, and highly competent uh, candidates. Next, we're responsible to the candidates, and we think that's very important. People put themselves out in this process. They make themselves very vulnerable. Um, <clears throat> protecting their confidentiality to the extent 
allowed by, by law um, uh, is very important. Uh, that helps bring more people uh, into the process and being very thoughtful and, and ethical about the way we deal with them, protecting their confidentiality until the, until the uh, necessary part in the process. Uh, you all know about open meetings and FOIA and all of that. Um, and finally, our, res our responsibility uh, to our firm, to each other, to be collaborative. And I, I mention that only because when, when we do good work um, and we are ethical and open and collaborative, uh, we, get great, we get better candidates. And so that's, that we take very seriously also. So we always like to mention our credo. We think it's important in what the firm is really, is really based upon. Um, uh, so back a little bit to uh, uh, some facts, some basic facts uh, about the firm. 45 con consultants specializing in high achieving school districts. Finished every search uh, on time and on budget. Uh, we have a, a guarantee that we're very proud of that in, in, unless others have changed theirs, we think it, it stands out uh, and is notable. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, and we're going to focus on your district needs. And, and your priorities. Um, this is a partial list of, of school districts that you are probably familiar, some of the names will be familiar to you. Birmingham, Bloomfield Hills. There's also a districts throughout the nation. We, we're in uh, a number of states and have a, have a national, a strong national presence now. And I think I, I mentioned uh, 200 completed searches. <clears throat> we feel when you look at that list that we're, we're a firm that is going to understand the unique challenges of a place like Midland. I, I, I've worked in districts. I um, like this organization. I understand that when, uh, when funds get frozen, expectations don't get frozen. I understand the high wire act that a superintendent needs, the demands, the expectations, and qualities that you're that you're looking for and I think we do as a, as a firm um, our process will begin uh, with ha heavy uh, community involvement we're going to get to know your organization well um, we're going to do that through focus groups uh, stakeholder meetings uh, that would be something we would fine-tune with a meeting with the Board of Education we're going to use some technology to create a, an online uh, process an online survey for those who might not otherwise attend a forum. Um, and we're going to involve your community in a structured way. I think it's very important that this is done so very well. Because while we want to be inclusive in the process, it's so important that that process not get off track and that the board remains firmly in control. Our page six and seven of the, I think you all have our proposal, I, I assume also, in addition to the PowerPoint, talks in, in much greater detail about, about our whole process. But I want to make a special point about this community involvement and what comes out of that. What, what comes out of that is a, a superintendent profile that we'll bring to you and, and we will suggest that you adopt it formally. That profile should be the driving force the, the focus of the rest of the search. It should identify the attributes that we're going to measure, and it's our job, and my job as a human resource professional to, professional to keep you on that task, because so many things pull people to the side. Other factors that aren't necessarily directly relevant to what it is we set out to measure in the first place. So that superintendent profile is going to set the attributes, and we're going to remain true to that, or try to get everybody to remain true to that, and help you measure those attributes in the candidates uh, as we as we go forward. Um, let's see if I say anything more about that. A little bit then about the consultant's role versus the board's role. We will, uh, of course. Uh, immediately get involved in, in advertising, uh, create the superintendent profile, as I mentioned, that will help us guide the process, uh, begin recruiting qualified candidates, and, and by the way, uh, as you may well know, this is not a great time to get people into Michigan, but we've, we've done it. Um, and that's 
uh, and I think it's page four of your proposal, uh, you, you'll see the kind of network we have with 45 uh, consultants represented in, in uh, states uh, throughout the nation and the associations that we belong to. Um, we have a pretty darn good network. So we're not going to wait for candidates to come to us. The firm needs to have a, have a presence, a national presence, and we'll start soon after um, our engagement with you to begin that process of recruiting through our network as well as advertising. So we're going to be advertising, creating the profile, recruiting candidates uh, through the traditional means and through our network. Uh, we'll be responsible, of course, for screening um, and for interviewing uh, candidates face to face. We'll, we typically sit down with a dozen uh, candidates and uh, conduct uh, formal face-to-face -face interviews and reference checks. Typically, we'd present you with five or six. That would be our goal, uh, the official slate that the board would review and either decide to adopt or reject. We would hope you would adopt them. At that point in time, uh, all bets are off in terms of candidate confidentiality. Their names are, are public, and the public part of the, of the process begins. Um, we will then give you guidance uh, in, term, in, in terms of interviewing techniques, developing questions that we think are effective, that really measure something, um, and help you through that process. The board's responsibility then, um, <coughs> obviously, to interview the presented candidates, narrow that uh, down to typically no more than three, um, review feedback from stakeholders, uh, typically on a second interview, when we get down to those finalists, we have a, a, a process to involve stakeholders, again, in a, in a, in a very structured way uh, in the applicant uh, process, um, and obviously to make the, the final selection. You may choose to conduct a site visit, and we'll talk to you about our experiences and, and advice uh, on doing those. Uh, uh, we would assist you with uh, advice in referencing. Typically, the boards are, are in addition to our references. Would, the board would typically be involved in that process also. Salary comparables to uh, know that you're in the market for, uh, uh, in the right market area for salary and, and any advice we can help you with on the formal contract. Um, this uh, the structured interview process is worth mentioning just a little bit more because that is the area where, where searches can, can certainly uh, get off track. Again, we want to be very inclusive. You want a strong uh, voice in our view, a strong sense of what the community needs. But good advice from a firm with experience about how uh, FOIA and Open Meetings Act uh, interact and uh, some of the challenges about interviewing and selecting in an effective way in that process. So we've, we've done this a lot of times and uh, can, can help you, uh, help guide that process, we think, in an effective way. Um, so just a little quick uh, survey, uh, summary of our services. Uh, again, we will meet uh, with, the, with the board uh, as soon as we are selected and begin some planning uh, we would expect that. I believe uh, Linda, our president, has in the proposal that would begin in, in March. Um, and we would begin to engage your community to build the superintendent profile that I talked about that's so important. And, and one more thing about that superintendent profile and the reason I keep coming back to it, that's also the road map for the new person. And that is so important that we help that person be successful. You've done work. Uh, we've seen your... Uh, cobalt uh, survey, you've, you've done some nice work already, I'd, we'd build on that. Uh, obviously, that would be one of the resources that we'd want uh, to you to connect us with the right person there, and obviously some quality work that's been done there. So building upon that, uh, uh, you've already got a, a nice head start. Um, <coughs> we would uh, present uh, an in-depth candidate uh, profiles in, in that meeting uh, when we bring you the slate, we call it. Uh, we would conduct uh, interview workshops to give you the best advice we can, uh, provide you with sample interview questions, prepare the committees uh, for interviews, and again, assist with 
salary information and communicate uh, e effectively throughout the, the process. We, we're very communicative as we go through all of this. Our guarantees that I mentioned and that we're, we're proud of, um, and I, in, in this environment with greater and greater challenges in finding superintendent uh, candidates, this is important. We are obviously not going to recruit the person who's placed in your role. <laughs> um, and that's obviously very, very important. Uh, we will conduct the search again. If your candidate, uh, for any reason, does not, does not complete the year, and, and that's at no expense to you, um, our expense is only, but at no additional cost. And as we move forward, uh, the third point here, uh, we will bring forward candidates and tell you find a superintendent. And I know of a search in Illinois where that uh, took more than a few slates. Uh, we, we hope that doesn't happen, uh, but we're with you, and we're going to finish the job and, and do it effectively. Why we'd be a great uh, fit for you, what sets us apart, again, I think, I think we know your clientele. We know, we know those, those challenges, uh, the pinch that uh, high uh, achieving districts are in, the demands you're facing, and the creativity you, you have to employ right now uh, to keep moving the district forward and the, and the kind of candidate that you're going to need. Um, again, we, do, we, uh, we recruit candidates. We don't just wait for, for applications, and we, we have a lot of resources to do that. Uh, we understand the need for engaging the community effectively and match the needs of your districts, of your district to the candidates uh, that we present. Um, that's the quick overview, and uh, I hope I haven't moved through that too fast, but I'm trying to be respectful of the hour. <coughs> we feel very qualified to do this job, and we've, we've done many searches like it. Open the questions. Yeah, Please. I was going to say, can you go back through, like the sheet that we had gotten before lists three people, including yourself. Can you yes. go back through the structure? Like, is there one person who's the lead? And yes, I actually, will. the slide you had had a fourth person. And oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. And it specifically listed what their role was, but it didn't list the role of the other three people. I apologize. Dave Peterson, who is a partner in the firm and has, of those 200, uh, more of those searches than he may care to admit behind him will will serve as the lead person uh, in this. I, I only wish uh, he and Carol could be here. Uh, uh, you, I just can't tell you how much you will like working with him. He's just a great resource and a great leader in that way. Uh, Carol and I will interchangeably serve in in assisting in all the other ways. We may be at the focus groups. Um, I boards have, uh, have asked me to help with uh, with question development and listen for it because that's just a, a something that I've done a lot of. So any of the other roles in terms of prepping the board, community surveys, we're, we're all pretty interchangeable. Uh, but we'll have Dave here also uh, for for his connections and his leadership role and, and would be the lead person. I just mentioned Dr. Lippi. Um, he, uh, he agreed to help us with this a little bit and I think has done some work for, for, your, for your district. Uh, no, maybe? <laughs> okay. Well, at, at any rate, uh, uh, he, he, he would have a, uh, a more of a minor role. The, the main consultants here uh, are the first three and, and Emmett will be helping us a little bit. Uh, he's a retired superintendent from Novi um, and has done just a lot of work in the strategic planning area and so forth. And, has agreed to help in terms of vetting candidates. He'd have a minor, minor presence. It would be mainly the three of us uh, at all times. I have a couple questions. Yes. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> getting back to your, your guarantee slide, uh, the first bullet point mentions we will not recruit the person placed as a new superintendent, but it doesn't necessarily say a timeline. Is there a timeline to that? In other words, can you come back two years later and quote your superintendent that you placed here? You know, we that's a general guarantee, um, and we would not be in the business of recruiting that person, uh, a period. I mean, obviously, everybody, a person has their right to mobility, but we're certainly not going to 
try to, to profit from the placement we made okay. with you. My, my next question is, um, and maybe I just missed it, what type of follow-up support uh, is in place or is offered to candidates who are uh, placed? Uh, that would be a, we, we have a mentoring process, and that's a, a separate uh, a separate thing. I would I would connect you with uh, with Linda Hansen, our CEO, about someone to do that. I think it's an outstanding uh, thing to do, depending on the person who you who you recruit. Some mentoring could really help them with that that critical first year, um, but i not part of the the fee or the, the process that we uh, we're talking about. We would, uh, I mean, obviously, if we can be of assistance to them and tell them what we've learned about your community and share the superintendent sure. profile, we're going to do that. But to uh, the kind of work you're talking about would be a separate process, and we'd be happy to, to provide that, and we certainly can. We have folks in the firm who, who do that very thing. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I heard that you helped Bloomfield Hill Public School find their recent superintendent. Yes. Were you involved in that process? I didn't do the Bloomfield one. Uh, Dave Peterson did, uh, who would be heading your search also. Okay. Um, we did, uh, that was a very successful search. We actually, one of the instances where we brought somebody in from uh, from another state. Um, oh, really? From Wisconsin. That's a Wisconsin superintendent and uh, is achieving uh, some high success so far. Very pleased with that placement. Thanks for asking about it. But I, I can't tell you a lot of details about it because I wasn't on that one. <coughs> uh, first of all, you may want to take notes since i got a few homework requests for okay. you to get back to me as soon as I can so we can Absolutely. complete this. We will do reference checks, but I, I would like two pieces of data. One, you've listed a bunch. Can you give me the years those placements okay. occurred? Yep. And then two, can you give me a list of the placements um, that Mr. Peterson did in Michigan? And the date on those. We sure can. And those could be emailed to Cindy or we'll whatever. Do, we'll get right on yep. that. Okay, then, then for my, thank you, and then for my questions, uh, on one of your slides you talked about a interview committee. Um, our history here has been interview by the whole of the board. What do you mean by interview committee? Well, um, I think we mean the whole board. We we okay. have uh, we we worked with the board as a whole in in uh, in, uh, in in interviewing. I mean that's the process I'm familiar with okay. also. Thank you. And uh, you know you may have when we get to that final step, uh, you may have a couple of stakeholder interviews in a yep. very structured way, yep. and we'd be happy to give your your advice on different ways. Uh, folks have accomplished that. Okay, thank yeah, you. That we would definitely want to go that way. We've historically done that. Um, in your recent experience, particularly in Michigan, because Michigan's got some of these anomalies, um, what would you say is the proportion of candidates you've placed that were ones that you actively recruited from a current position versus those that applied to you for the position? I'm fairly new with the firm, been involved with the Novi and, and Rochester searches. I might re defer to my colleagues uh, on, on what their percentages were. Um, in, uh, in, in one of those, it was a pretty direct r recruit, uh, someone who had shown some interest, and we were able to follow through and, and get some uh, good results. Um, it it can, can just go either way. I, I think. Uh, in other cases, I, I can think of, and Dave could talk about that in greater detail. I know we've reached out and found additional candidates to expand the list, but I could maybe provide you some data with that if you want. If you have data, yeah. that would be useful. Okay. Um, you said it, but I'll, I'll ask the question anyway. Uh, any other experiences where you've presented slates that the board kind of went, eh, eh, please bring back some more? In Michigan, in particular, uh, not in Michigan. Just that one. Um, okay. Right. Alrighty. Um, salary survey advice, etc. You mentioned that. Uh, can you go a little more depth of what you do? Well, um, t 
typically, I, I would expect that your, your, your attorney will be involved in helping to draft the actual contract, mm -hmm. but boards have asked us to, you know, try to find salary and benefit information for comparable districts, uh, and, and we're just very willing and able to do that. We, we keep that information up, so, so salary bene and benefit packages has, has been our experience. Okay. Um, do you conduct intensive background checks? Intensive background checks, yes, we do. Okay. We, we will start that process. Uh, in a recent experience, we had a board uh, that wanted to do three apiece, so 21 additional ones uh, came through. Uh, for, uh, but uh, we'd probably want to have the board involved in doing that also. So uh, we're going to do a lot of background work. Okay. And then this is more less of a question and more of an education for us. Um, what's been your recent history, particularly in Michigan again, of superintendents being either reluctant, unwilling, or actually turning down jobs because of housing issues, things of that nature? You know, it's an issue. Um, uh, not so much housing. Uh, one of the challenges you have sometimes is some of the candidates that you may be interested in and might be a good match for Midland can sometimes be reluctant to put themselves out for that and, and to go through that public process because the very best we can do under the law is provide them confidentiality up to the point where they're in a, in a finalist pool. Uh, once they leave the firm and become in the public domain, obviously, you know. So that's, that's, more, of a, th that's more of a challenge. Uh, but, but typically, uh, my experience is more recruiting in the metro area, so we haven't had housing type demands. Uh, but uh, it, it's more this issue of uh, maybe some of them being a little reluctant uh, to leave their, their, their comfort zone if they're already in a high performing uh, uh, positive situation where they're experiencing some success, uh, making that, that change, you know, with obviously, obviously no guarantee that they're going to they're gonna make it. So we, we do our very best to uh, work with them on that. Okay, and you did mention you haven't ran into that because most many of your placements are metropolitan areas um, versus the housing issue because you can uh, move from right. District yeah, to district. rural areas. We have them. Uh, I'm not. Pr haven't been personally involved with them. The the searches I'm more familiar with are in the southeastern Michigan metro mm -hmm. area. Uh, Lapeer, we've also done. That'd be a little um, different. We we've done. Uh, some more rural settings, but I have to get you a list of that, or some more outstate settings, but I'd have to get you a list of those. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Anybody else? Nope. Okay, so if you'll forward that stuff I will, I will to indeed. Cindy, and thank you Absolutely. very much for coming all the way up here. Oh, sure. Um, uh, your track record is impressive, and we will be getting back to you in the middle of next week. Thanks very much. Thank, thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Okay, to wrap up this part of the agenda, um, I would like to encourage board members to basically listen to what we were just told by almost all these firms in terms of advice versus uh, uh, selecting them. Number one, please do your homework as we select this firm. It's critical. They're the ones that are going to find the next superintendents our most important job. So please understand from their writings and what you heard tonight, what they do, what they don't do, what you felt confident they can do for us, what you felt they might not be able to do for us. And I'll just pose a bunch of questions by email just to prompt your thinking. Uh, and everybody else has questions to prompt each other's thinking, just send the questions out. Don't answer them by email. We'll, we'll answer those questions about ourselves at the next open meeting. Uh, but just to get the thought process running instead of just walking into a meeting cold, wondering what we should be thinking about. Um, number two, as Mr. Lobert very eloquently said at least three times, please, 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 let's stay within the process. Uh, having gone through this before, I can tell you if you don't, you're going to scare away candidates, you're going to confuse our public, and you're going to frustrate the search firm. So it's very important that we stay within that process. Uh, so please. Um, when we get to the meeting, as we have these questions opposed, 
I'll, I'll try to walk us through a little process on this selection. Sometimes it will just jump right out that everybody agrees that this is the top guy, but please come in before the discussion with pre-thoughts on what you think your ranking of the firms are, okay? And you won't bring, we won't bring that out right away. Just come mentally prepared for what your ranking is, doing your own homework, et cetera. Lastly, and you heard me tell all these guys, I will come back to you with each probably in the three to four range of districts to contact. And what I won't do is make each of you an expert in one firm. For instance, Yvonne, I won't give you all MLI references. What I will do is try to spread that around so that each of you get a flavor from somebody about each one. Okay, so when you come back, you'll get this taste or flavor for at least those searches. Each of us will, then we can talk about those flavors and see how they match up or don't match up or just see if it's an anomaly of a given, of a given search. Um, let's see what other notes do I have here. I think that's it, okay? So come prepared for next week. It'll be very important. I'll review all this um, with Lynn and John to make sure they're on the same page also as we go forward, okay? This will be very time consuming for all of us over the next six months. It's our process. Carl can't guide us through it, it's us. Um, and so we'll have a lot of special meetings, a lot of public meetings as we go forward. So please make your calendars as flexible as we can so we can <coughs> proceed a pace to have somebody in place, ready to go with a decent transition uh, with Carl as we go forward in the June timeframe. Okay, any other comments about the search process? Seeing none, I gotta find my agenda. Bear with me. <laughs> now I had some notes on mine that I that Cindy adroitly put on there for me that I don't wanna don't wanna lose. Ah. Oh, I got it. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Um, you'll see a listing of scheduled activities. Uh, Cindy, I notice our special meeting in March is not on that list on the agenda. Um, okay, thank you. And at this point, we're going to move into study discussion sessions, but I have one announcement that I'll make uh, as part of that. And that is that uh, the nominations, and John's not here, we'd have John do this, and I'll just do it so it doesn't get lost as we go forward. Uh, we need nominations for the 2013 Gerstacker Awards is now an open process. Um, nominations are due on March 8th. So parents, students, board members, fellow teachers, um, be served notice if you're listening to this tonight that uh, please submit nominations. Uh, the ceremony is on May 9th at Northwood again. And I would encourage as many people to come to that as possible, it is a very touching ceremony. It uh, you will see a lot of tears, you will see a lot of happiness, you will see families, uh, and uh, it's a great uplifting experience. And it's wonderful that uh, the Gerstacker family continues that tradition with us. That said, we'll move into study discussion session. Started my right last time. I'll start from my left <coughs> tonight, Yvonne. We just heard so much tonight. I just have to really digest all of it, I guess. I, um, I guess I really don't have anything to say tonight. I've kind of lost track of the first part of the meeting, actually. I've been <laughs> so, such close attention to the second part here. So. Understood. Angela. I just want to highlight, I had this Saturday. I think it was just this great day to be part of the Midland Public Schools. So I thought I would just say, I woke up Saturday morning and in the newspaper it had about the Dow High girls going 20 and 0 and how fabulous that was to break that record. I then went to Saginaw Valley State University for the SVL swimming championship meet where Midland High took fifth place out of 10 schools and Dow High for the 11th year in a row won the meet. While I was there, a friend of mine who has a swimmer had been at S. VSU the whole day with her math counts team and out of 10 schools in the area Northeast came in first place and Jefferson came in second place in the event six out of the top 10 were from Midland Public Schools Central also participated 
and Northeast and Jefferson were the two schools that will be going in a couple weeks down to the state competition um, at the Tech Center, GM <coughs> Tech Center in Warren. Then that night, I went to Dow High's Ren Fair and I experienced <laughs> what is great. I mean, the arts program and these students are just so unbelievable. They're singing and their musical ability. So I felt like I had experienced all. I had experienced the athletics and the academics and then the arts. And it was just, it was a fabulous day. So I just thought I would like to share that. <laughs> Excellent. Scott. I, uh, I don't have any comments tonight. Thank you. Kim. Well, and I was lucky enough to sit next to Angela to watch the yeah. boys win the Saginaw Valley competition. And I also wanted to bring up today, I uh, did research on switching over to the Google Apps, the Google Apps Education Edition K through 12. And we have the opportunity to save minimum $400,000 a year by going to this. So this is something we thoroughly need to investigate. And I table the discussion until next week when John and Lynn can be here to have a little bit more input. And if you, uh, the person actually from Celine Schools said she would come over here and present to us Heather um, what is her last name? Heather, Heather Kelstrom, and she was extremely knowledgeable, extremely helpful, said she'd come over for the price of lunch, so I think we should take her up on that. She knew about the synergies with the iPad and the various um, Google apps. So. Oh, yeah. Well, I'd be happy to respond to that if you want. It, it's... Um, it, um, it's an awkward position, I think, for the district, Kim, to find ourselves in because the board actually had an actionable item on uh, this issue that you're raising when it comes to uh, purchasing the servers. Mm -hmm. okay. And the board acted on that back on the 28th of January, and here we are a month later where an individual board member does their own research that none of the rest of us are aware of, seemingly with this magical 400000 that can be saved. And um, not only did the board approve the purchase, but we uh, purchased it. We issued the purchase order on February the 6th. We received it last week, and for all we know, it may be installed. So for me, it's a process um, um, issue that we're faces, facing as a board of education and how we work together with an administrative team. Because it is darn near impossible to run a school district when you have a board member independently doing their own research and a month after the board approves something which we've acted on puts us in this position. Having said that, I mean, if there's 400,000 of savings out there, certainly that's enough to get anybody's attention. And, and I would certainly, um, that gives me pause. But I have to share that it's not the first time that you've gone out and done research on your own. You have contacted that's people, fine. well, let me finish. We have contacted people at, um, you've contacted people at New Tech. You've contacted people, at least via email, with Meridian Public Schools. And frequently what we find out when you launch your independent research is that it is not um, thorough. It's not as thorough as our independent technology department that has multiple people that bring their expertise to play for the district. And quite frankly, that has a history of giving this board um, really great advice um, over the years. I think what's a little um, awkward for me about this is without involving administration, there's a larger context even with what we're talking about here that you have to take into play. And I thought that Mr. Verlindy did a great job at our last meeting really addressing that. When he talked about we have years of training of our staff on using the systems that we use. Sometimes the savings that we think is out there, be the research thorough or not, when you look at the larger context and you take the time to ask the question to the district, why do you do what you do? Help me understand that. I realize as a new board member, I need to take some time to understand why you do what we do. In all honesty, I'm not seeing that from you. And so it puts us in a position when the day of a board meeting, without a heads up to me or the board president, you want to put on hold something, actually there was a decision this board made a month ago that we've already purchased. And I don't think that's a very astute way to operate a school district. So that's my comment to that. Well, my response would be the day after I brought this up and we discussed it. And I have two letters from you saying that you did thorough in investigations of uh, the Google apps and how expensive it would be and that there would be no cost savings. And then 
today I did the research, and yes, there is minimum $400,000 savings. Well, on, on the other hand, I know you've heard from the Meridian superintendent after claiming that they would save well, money, and they, they haven't sa saved money. I he just communicated that to you. Mr. To Let him, him complete his discussion, please. Okay. Hey, I, I'm just raising a process point because, quite frankly, it's not going to matter if I'm your superintendent or you have the next superintendent. If you have board members that independently go out and do their own research that nobody knows about, and then a month later you change decision or suggest that we go on hold with something, how do you do the day-to-day -day business of operating a school district? Um, I've been a superintendent for 12 years. I've been in this business for 25 years, and I've never seen a school district operate that way. I don't think that's healthy for the district. I don't think it's fair to the staff that reports to me who have their priorities for this year, who also have um, limited time with less staff than they ever have historically. I don't think you can operate a district that way. And that's just how I feel about it. When it's the potential half million dollar savings, it's something you need to look at. And um, yes, whatever information would, you need, we can talk to Heather Kel Kelstrom. She can do a wonderful presentation. Would today. you like to put that in the form of a motion? Yes. Well, I would like to table this discussion. The okay, then we will table the discussion. I would also point out that the article you gave us said Celine saved $400,000. Right, and would they we have, have fewer students than we do? It may not be a function of number of students. There's a whole lot to save as in-depth research for $400,000 when it is just a statement made off of a newspaper article and one conversation with somebody who has no reference frame to our situation is very dangerous. Okay, and that's what's led to these other ones that we've done wild goose chases on that you've brought up that mm -hmm. take a lot of time of people chasing mm -hmm. to find out they are in error. So, the rec no. so that's, that's my only comment. I'm going to stop my comment at that point. Any other discussions? Okay, that said, I have to entertain a motion to go into closed session uh, for purposes of discussion <coughs> of uh, the SESPA labor contract. Uh, we will to tell the public we are going to go into closed session to do that, and when we come out of closed, assuming we vote to go to closed session, uh, when we come out, we will not be conducting any other business. We will be adjourning the meeting right after so that uh, those of you who are up at 10 o'clock watching the meeting wonder if there's going to be something after the closed <laughs> session. The answer is no, and uh, if we do have anything further, we'll just do it at the next meeting. Move to okay. go into closed session. Moved by Scott, support by Yvonne on closed session. Uh, all in favor of closed session, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I hear no nays. Uh, we will go into closed session. Uh, if we can close the doors and vacate the room. Okay.